The following program is a collection of students talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show sticks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sports! 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 Sport. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this wide trenches Wednesday, January 24th, 2024, this program starts now. Football! It's beautiful. Football has a ton of storylines, and we'll be talking about it all today. We'll also be talking a little bit of NHL, because there's a Mormon in uh, Utah who's writing open letters now to the NHL saying it's time to bring a hockey team to beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah, and... He'll be joining us today, Ryan Smith, yeah. billionaire, obviously, self-made, formerly of the company oh, Qualtrics. 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 There it is. Qualtrics, which is a surveying company way before and way ahead of its time. This dude, not that old, self-made billionaire, game changer, owner of the jazz and many other things, has had massive success, has been very open that he wants an NHL team to come to Utah. And I'll tell you what, I think it would be the perfect place yep. for it. Mm -hmm. The Utah folks show up whenever they have events there, and it's that city is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So nice. Yeah. It is beautiful. Now... He will come on and chat here in a few hours, and we'll see what his thoughts are on whether or not Bettman, who did respond and say we appreciate Ryan Smith and his passion for not only the sports but the state and everything he's trying to look at, basically kick the can down the road and say, yeah, okay, sounds like a plan. Mm -hmm. We'll hear what Ryan Smith's thinking in a couple hours. In the second hour, we'll have J.J. Watch. Right? Right. That is a weekly appearance. Last week, if you do recall, he ended the show on ESPN by saying, uh, PFF sucks. Have a great day, everybody. And then got us into a stats war yep. whenever we were already in every other war possible before. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. We'll see how one week has maybe changed his mind on his stance or his thoughts or how the week has been since igniting that war with the numbers experts. Now, speaking of numbers experts, yesterday that our numbers expert, Hembo, gave me a bunch of stats about Brock Purdy, mm -hmm. and I led the show with I'm sick of the Brock Purdy center. That thing was seen by a lot of people. Oh, a yeah. lot of people. Oh, yeah. A lot of San Francisco 49ers players and fans mm -hmm. saying, thank you for talking about our second-year quarterback in a positive way. We have some interesting questions, no, sports yes. media oh. questions from Hembo oh. today. And in 18 yes. minutes, we'll have Kalen DeBoer, the new head coach of the University of Alabama. Yeah. Obviously, the only thing you're hearing about that is everybody's leaving. Yep. Alabama's done. He's out on the road recruiting, I do believe, but he's a friend of the program. Just led the Washington Huskies to the national championship in his second year as coach there and the found a year of the Pac-12. And now with the transfer portal and a 30-day rule, whenever a new coach is hired, or whenever a coach decides to leave a team, there's 30 days where a transfer doesn't count. It's just like, hey, kind of green flag racing for everybody to come poach and recruit and cherry pick. And obviously Ohio State had a couple big-time mm -hmm. pulls out of the Alabama locker room, as did many other schools. What are his thoughts going forward? Because that guy damn good ball coach. Yeah. When he was at Sioux Falls, he started there in 2005. In 2006, they won a national championship. Whenever he goes to the Washington Huskies in 2022 and 2023, they go to the national mm -hmm. championship. Kalen DeBoer has been able to build winners everywhere he's gone. Feels like he might have to do that again in Alabama, even though he's coming through a program that has been well-established and figured out. This will be the best resources he's ever had. This will be the best talent he's ever had. I'm excited to see what he does with it and how he feels about it. That's 17 minutes from now. Now, with all that being said, the NFL has stuff popping off. Mm. Always. There's been a GM hired. There's been some right. offense coordinators interviews. And there's been a coach fired. Let's go to the toxic Ooh. table at Boston Connor. Looking amazing in your kitten shirt. And Ty Schmidt, owner of the Green Bay Packers. Now, a man that you have been kind of on the fence about here as of the last week or two. Yeah. But I've certainly been on the get that guy the hell off my team train for a long time. Joe Barry officially fired as defense coordinator whenever you saw this. What were your immediate thoughts, especially with how good they'd been playing towards the last two games of his tenure, pretty much. Yeah, for sure. Never want to dance on a uh, guy's grave, obviously. Sure. But yes! Thank God, okay? Because, listen, he did. 
He he was great his last couple weeks. <laughs> never wanna. You never wanna dance on a guy's grave because my, you can't have don't don't have to sometimes. Mm-hmm. Well, but the, in this case you kind of do because I have been calling for it and you can't be a flip you can't be a flip flopper. I couldn't you know because they lost to the 49ers but looked pretty good. You can't be like all right, well let's run it back next year. If I mean stats don't tell everything, but. When they first hired him in 2021, it was kind of, I mean, it wasn't the kind of hire, I think, where like everyone got really excited because you look at his previous experience as a DC and it's like, already hasn't been great, but you know, it doesn't matter what you did in the past. It's all about what you do in the future. But the same things were happening that had been happening to those previous Packers teams. Like it, during his tenure, they never finished higher than 23rd in yards allowed per rush. So like they could never stop the run in the NFC, especially in that conference. Like you, People are just running it down their throat. When you get into the championship games, it's happened several times over the last few years where the 49ers, it's like it doesn't matter who they have playing quarterback because they can just run it 40 times. And in that NFC championship, we talk about all the time, they had 186 yards or whatever it was before, before contact. contact. Yep. Exactly. Not, not, not total rushing. And Before contact they had. Yikes. Right. And, and they had. I mean, against uh, the Bears in, in Week 18, they looked much better. And then, obviously, in both playoff games, the Cowboys offense is unbelievable. So is the Niners. And, and they were pretty good. But when you look at what he's done as the Packers' D.C., like it's 28th in rushing yards allowed per game this year. That's terrible. Can't win with that. Last year, they were 26th uh, in rushing yards allowed you know, per game. They have eight first-round picks on defense. That was kind of the whole thing. It's like, hey, they need to find someone who can come in here and get the most out of all the talent that they have on the defense. And for whatever reason, he wasn't able to do it because it was. like, Especially when Love, when Rodgers left and Love was the quarterback, the kind of the general narrative going in was like, hey, the defense is kind of primed and ready to, to take the reins and, and kind of carry this team while Jordan Love's getting his feet wet and getting ready. And it just never happened. And then, obviously, Jordan Love kind of emerges, and it's like, okay, he is the Carries guy. The team. Exactly, and he ends up carrying the team. So it's it's one of those things where, again, he, he got much better, but a change was absolutely needed. Like, I mean, Packers are one of those franchises like the Steelers, like the Patriots, where, you know, like, granted, they don't have a Hall of Fame quarterback anymore, but, I mean, we'll see what Love does, you know, over the next – I mean, he looks pretty damn good, but, like – you, you can't rest on your laurels and be okay with just like, hey, we we shouldn't have made it to the divisional round, but we did, and then we lost. And, and like, that can't be – like, we're trying to win Super Bowls here. We're trying to win the division, especially when you look at the Lions now. Like, they're going to be a, a legitimate contender for the next <laughs> Hell years. Hell yeah. So we'll see. And then you also look at what DCs are potentially available. Like, you know, the people are, are uh, throwing around, like, Ajero Everett or Averro, excuse me, um, who LaFleur worked with in Los Angeles and who was kind of a hot name to maybe be a head coach before he went to Carolina. I don't know if he'll get let go. Vrabel's obviously out there. We don't know if he's going to get a head coaching and job. And he has size LaFleur. Yep. Exactly. They were both in Tennessee together. Belichick can't see him just being a D coordinator. But Could you imagine there. him being the D.C. for LaFleur's team? LaFleur's wow. leading the meetings and Bill Belichick's just sitting there. <laughs> I think that's going to be a tough one. But maybe mm-hmm. Vrabes because he and LaFleur have respect mm-hmm. for each exactly. other. Exactly. You never know. Wink's that, out there. Yeah, Wink's out there. there. I mean, there are a couple guys where I feel like if they actually get it right this time, like there is someone out there who you don't need to do a massive – overhaul with who they have on defense like there is someone out there who can get the most out of the talent they have on defense and if their defense is a a top 12 or a top 15 unit next year like that they look much different than a a nine and eight team who kind of limped into the playoffs than they did this year I think they can be like legitimate contenders with how well the offense did down the stretch so very excited. Obviously, it sucks for him, but they're saying he may stay on in some sort of capacity. I don't know well, what go that. Go for him. That's I don't know. Like, be careful. Yeah, advice. exactly. Yeah. I don't know what that would be. I don't know why you would want to do that after you get shit canned as the D coordinator. I have a feeling you'd probably want to get the hell out of town. But either way, great day for Packers fans. Kind of shaking off the, the the you know that that bad taste in our mouth from Santa Clara. So. Well, and then George Kittle. Yeah, exactly. Which, <laughs> which I, I didn't mind that. Hey, that's good. That's good shit talk. I appreciate that. <laughs> George is an Iowa guy. So, you know, I, I love and respect him, but no, it, it was a great day for Packers fans. Cause I really was, as we were getting through the playoffs, I was thinking, okay, well he's, he's done enough in these last three games. Like they're going to keep him and then it's going to be more of the same next year. And then we'll see, maybe they have two or three games where it's like, Oh, they, they might be figuring it out, but it was time for a change. And I'm glad the floor finally said, okay, Enough's enough. Let's go find a new guy. Eight first-rounders normally means a lot of uh, athleticism and talent. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Wink Martindale. 
Exactly. Running, you know, dunning potentially. Right. And I don't think he's going to be a guy that's just going to rest on his yawnies and take a year off. Mm-hmm. He could do it. Vrabel, if he was to get back in there, I'm sure he would have some ideas on how to strategize and win games. It's like with all the options that seem to be available, both head coach and coordinators right now. Yeah. It's like uh, a lot of moves being made. Now, some of them will be right. Some of them will be wrong. We never know until how we see the teams play out. But winning a headline is certainly something. The Packers won a headline. Yeah, here exactly. With I mean, Joe Barry. Unanimously, fans are like, hey, enough is enough. I understand the last three games were awesome and they look better. But, like, the proof's in the pudding. He hasn't been very good all three years. He's been the D.C., so – Time to move on. This is awesome. Let's let's go find a guy. Hell yeah. Well, good luck. And Jordan Love needs it, deserves it. Yes. Right? What a dog he is. He, you said uh, we don't have a Hall of Famer anymore just because we don't 100% sure know. Feels like. F- sure, certainly feels. Yeah, good Jordan enough. Love's unbelievable. One half of the hammer. Ah, Cowboys, big stealer. Uh, Tone Diggs is your big Steelers fan. Cliff Kingsbury allegedly interviewing for the offense coordinator job, which this man, 12-year NFL vet, Super Bowl champion, player, and coach, Jackie Moon, host of In the Trenches. AQ Shipley's here. Hey, AQ. AQ, so obviously you played for Arizona under Cliff Kingsbury's uh, guidance. He interviewed for the Chicago Bears job. Now, allegedly, Peter King said that he's interviewing for the Pittsburgh Steelers job. He's back on the circuit to an OC within modern offense, he's the right, he's a, he's a good, he's a great, he'd, he'd win the headlines, I think, if you were to hire yeah. Cliff Kingsbury as your offense coordinator. He's exactly what you want. You want to basically infuse the new age scheme into that Pittsburgh Steelers locker room. They haven't had it in years, and he's so good. I mean, I, there were so many times he would come up to us and be like, hey, man, I, this is what I do. I get guys open. And when you turn on his tape, there's guys open all over the field. Former quarterback, obviously incredibly mm-hmm. handsome. Yep. Father and Marine. Boom! <laughs> oh! From Texas, just loves ball and looks cool all the Grind. time. So cool. I mean, he's in he's in there at three thirty in the morning, all the time. Ooh, really? Yeah, he's a grinder. I don't think anybody talks about that about mm-hmm. Cliff because how cool he looks. Mm-hmm. You're saying he's in, he's in there early, getting his workout in. He's watching tape by four fifteen. Jeez. Oh, okay, yeah. Cliff. Cliff. Didn't know that about Cliff. Obviously, Dad Marine from. T- yeah. Of course. Makes uh, sense. Should have known this from the beginning. Speaking of looking cool like Cliff Kingsbury and a guy that's grinding 3.30 a.m. every yeah. day. Every day. Every day. Nine-year NFL vet, host of Everything DBs, Good D, Bad D, and the man-to-man podcast, Darius J. Butler. Thank you very much. D-Butch, defense coordinator, is it as easy as you find a good one, your team's good, and if you have a bad one, your team's bad? Uh, no. I mean, it's just about just with most other positions, just the guys that's going to be the same guy every day, and they can get their message across. And then you got to have players that you empower, too. And uh, we don't talk about – uh, meeting rooms enough, like the different players in each meeting room. I think that's the most position groups. Position group, yeah, that's because that's where we spend most of our time, right? We have team meetings. That's where we spend the least time as a team. Unit meetings, offense, defense, special teams, and then you know DB, quarterback room, running back rooms. The guys you have in those rooms are very, very important. You can look at the teams left, and uh, that's that's what matters. Culture matters, obviously, but on this level, the players are what separates the team. Derek Barnes actually gave the game ball that he got immediately after the Lions mm-hmm. win against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to the linebacker room. Yep. He Hell said, yeah. hey, this is to the linebacker room. That's kind of like your little family. That's who you're hanging out with. That's who you're learning with. And also, if you guys are getting blamed for losses, the whole room is getting blamed. That's another name I wouldn't mind seeing getting some D.C. opportunities. Kelvin Shepard. You know, he's done a good job with that linebacker room in Detroit with, um, you know, a lot of guys, a lot of Guys, I think uh, league wide, you want to look at that and say, "Oh, that's a great linebacker core." Um, but he's got him in, in great position all year. Yeah, long. and Shep, by the way, awesome beer run. Hell yeah, great legendary dude. human, great mana. Where's he mm-hmm. from? Calvin Shepard. Yeah. yeah, he played for. I know he played LSU. Us. Played for Bills, I think. Yep, Buffalo after Indy. Um, oh, as soon as he came yeah. in the locker room, be loved by him. Weapon. Yeah, great dreads. Nice. Great, good vibes. Mm-hmm. Great, great vibes. always, great for yeah. always, great vibes. Bring him to New but he's very like <laughs> great communicator too, and uh, he's gone. He was on Hard Knocks a bunch yeah. with yeah. um, what was the young Rodrigo? Yeah, mm-hmm. Rodrigo. So mm-hmm. great, great communicator, great coach. Love him. Aaron yeah. Glenn's defense uh, put on a show this past weekend. Now, everybody assumed that Aaron Glenn was going to the Tennessee Titans, but by everybody, I'm saying like. Everybody we were talking to that would potentially mm-hmm. know about mm-hmm. anything happening around the NFL, potentially before others, they were saying Aaron Glenn's going to be the Titans' new head coach. Done. That's just how that's going to go. It's like they're already interested. He's having the year of his life. Mm-hmm. 
it is the perfect timing for him to get a head coaching job. That is going to happen. Then they hire Brian Callahan, which we will talk about here in a matter of moments with AQ as well. But this Aaron Glenn thing, I would like to chat about because the only thing we've really heard is that they fire the secondary coach in Detroit, yep. and then defense becomes great. Mm -hmm. And you talk about MCDC, you talk about Jared Goff, mm -hmm. obviously you talk about Brad Holmes, the job that he's done. You talk about the grit, you talk about everything going on, but you don't really talk about the defense much, and you don't really, I don't know shit about Aaron Glenn. Is nope. what, they'll show him on the side Line, I'm like, oh yeah, I could pick if like if they did a uh, who's Aaron Glenn, I'd mm -hmm. say that's Aaron Glenn. But I don't really know much about him. Then you started watching his film against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers AQ, and you said, hey, you know how we did a Todd Bowles masterclass type situation? Aaron Glenn played chess against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and out schemed the shit out of them pretty much, and probably won that game for the Detroit Lions. That's exactly right. I didn't know much about him because all we heard last year was their defense was terrible. They fire the DB coach. They go on a little bit of a run. They've been great this year. But again, Foxy says like the narrative on him is. It's not good, right? And right. so I dive into the film, and I'm like, well, this is pretty good. And so when you look at it, um, right here. So in this particular look, right, you see five guys across the line of scrimmage, right? And so one, two, the center's covered. Then you got over the right guard, and then you got out wide with Hutch, right? So they see that as a five down. It's an empty protection. The, the key here is Anzalone, the linebacker, right? So all the right side is doing from the field is they're going to have to sift. You always want to leave the widest on the quarterback. So check this out. They're looking at him. The minute that Anzalone fires in the A-gap, the whole right side, 68, or yeah, 69, 67, right? They slide down to the left. But here's the key. Mm. As 67, Luka Decky goes down, the, the guy over the guard drops out, so he's got no one to block. He tries to react and get back out on Hutch, but this is a, this is a key when you can out-scheme somebody and you get Hutch, one of the best players, pass rushers in the league, one-on-one. -on -one or one on none, really, yep. and just a free hitter on the quarterback. Yeah, mm -hmm. because he does a fake come, right? Old buddy on the uh, right tackle who he's on down to, and you always yep. take most okay. dangerous, right? That's exactly right. You always want to leave the widest. So this is the widest just so happens to be Aiden Hutchinson. Just so happens to be. And here's the other key that really kind of confuses Baker here. is he sees someone drop out, he thinks he's protected. Because it's a five-man protection. They're really only bringing one, two, three, four. Right, And so by doing that, they trick him, they get him to sift, but he can't get back out. And Baker thinks maybe, oh, I see someone pop out, oh, I'm, I might be protected. And Aaron Glenn knew that this was Tampa Bay Buccaneers rules pretty much. He did, and he did it all game long. He had an answer for all the protections. If they were sliding to the willy to get him going there and bring two from opposite. I mean, it was all day long, edge pressure. He did a great job. When those two backers drop out, especially mm -hmm. a big backer like Campbell, like you take away those short, those quick throws, those quick throws across the middle. So great. Great job, Byron. Yeah, listen, Aaron Glenn. I mean, that's I don't. I think Aaron Glenn's family's probably pretty thankful that we just showcased that because yeah. nobody's really talking about it. His name was up for head coaching jobs, but we didn't know anything about him. That's back to back weeks where you can showcase the football IQ mm -hmm. pretty much, exactly. and great coaching matters. Which leads me to interesting sports media questions yes. from Hembo. Yeah, damn it, AQ. We're gonna. <laughs> what's your problem? You know, you know what this does to my gears. Why? You know, you know how I feel about this. Why? Well, we used to do this thing called questions from other sports shows, mm -hmm. and now those questions are on this sports show. No, just right now. This is the first time. That's what that, this is. This is not the first time. This is not the first time. Oh, we read them last week. Yeah, yeah. we did do them. Now we have a cool, stupid graphic thing that makes it even worse. No, but this guy is not stupid. He's I, not. only cool We're doing in sports media. I completely agree. Hey, I look, love this him. This is what we are. Remember? No, yeah, no, yeah. That no. Is it. We're journalists. It's much different. I don't know, because that whole thing, boy, they've been saying a lot about us <laughs> and the disgrace we are to that. So, no. to make it better, we're going to do it. We're going to do play their game. We're going to do sports media. This game sucks. This game doesn't. We haven't even played it yet. We I haven't even played it yet. I already hate it. I already hate it. Emmy? Huh? We're going to be up for Emmy? If we well, that's a whole other conversation I don't want to get into. <laughs> right. No, I, we're I not. I don't even want to get into it. Oh, Darius, that was a. There was no reason to bring that up. We want a Razzie. We Sports don't want an Emmy. We're doing what you know everybody else does. So yeah, but like that's the thing about the Emmys. Like, who's voting on it? Do those people matter? Never, never have, never will for this particular show. So it's like for other shows, maybe, mm -hmm. but for our show, like, who cares about those people? Those are all the people that didn't want our show to be on any platform mm. so ever doing all the voting pretty much okay. so like do i even want to play their little game and do i think we even deserve it i don't think we deserve it would it be an honor yes are there people that would like love to get one of those though yes so i'm almost at the point where it's like not nah, hell with it i don't even want to participate in the entire thing <laughs> right. 
But I think we're going to be forced to potentially. No, no, don't worry. If we keep doing these questions, no one will give a shit. No, we'll get. We'll get. <laughs> this, uh, is yeah. this, this is how you do it. Okay. Guys, this is the probably the teaser, actually, for the. This yeah. is the Emmy nom, probably, if I had to guess. Count me out. <laughs> we're going to. Hey, you're going to be Connor. Cart Bell. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Be okay. The on the, that, on the that, Emmy. That's fine. Give it to someone. Melt it down into nothing. Where is the necklace? Maybe. That'd be maybe. Sweet. Maybe throw it into a lake somewhere. Throw it into a lake. Yeah. yeah, yeah Come yeah. on. Maybe it turns into. That. Maybe it turns into an amulet. Get These something. are people's Super Bowl, bro. You remember when Shrags was on a couple? Years? That's when I learned. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That's when I learned. Like, oh, this is the. This is what everybody in TV is really, really hunting. Mm-hmm. I didn't know enough about anything. I apologize. But when Shrags came on after Good Morning Football one. Holy shit, this guy Bingo. just won a Super Bowl. Yeah, he was talking about retirement, walking off into the sunset. Got Miami. Dude, I li- in my heart, I was like, all right, I do care about these now. Yeah. Because look at how happy mm-hmm. somebody is for winning one. Like, that was incredible. Yeah. We just don't have enough respect for these things, which is why that second line there attacks us as well. Exactly. Anyways, we'll learn to respect it more as we go. Of course. Sure we will. We don't have as much time now for this seg. Ah, oh, shit. Because shucks. everything you yeah, two sorry. did. Son of a oh, bitch. You two are happy. I didn't even think of we'll that. We'll have to do this later. Yep. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> we'll have to do it later. What? Let's <laughs> just do it now. We better. We have plenty of time. Yeah, we will do Listen, it later. We, we don't better. have time. We have plenty of time. Damn. We don't have the time. We'll just rattle through them real quick. Nope. We don't. Have, there, this isn't a rattle through. This is a seg. What yeah. do you mean? It's a whole A block. It's a seg. What are you even talking about? Oh, I mean, we can just trim it down. LeBron or Jordan, bruh. Okay. That's not what that's, it is. That's not the one we're using. Come Which on. One that's using? not the one we are using. Which one are we using then? And we're not more impressed with this or that. That, no. that is not it. Mm. It was actually a confidence rating. It was, yeah, oh. exactly. Yeah. Okay. And like certain objects or, or what? Confidence in... Who's going to have a bigger game? Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes? No, Mello? that isn't it either. What are oh. we doing? Jeez, well, that that's easy. a good question. Yeah. I'm sick of it. That's what we're Mahomes. doing right Patrick now. Patrick Mahomes. I, I thought we were trying to win Emmys as of like a minute and a half ago. No. Nope. And now listen what you guys are doing to the entire thing. Not you guys. One guy. And I and pointing two fingers at me, Tony is a little over the top, but I, I'm I will take it. Sure. I'm the guy. And it's gonna be confidence rating. Listen to this angle. Ooh. Okay. All right. And the coaches remaining in the NFL. Love, love, love it. Love it. That'd be so much fun. We'll do that later. See, why can't we do like confidence rating in away team locker rooms? Which away team locker room are you more confident in? I have not been in the Santa Clara Levi Stadium locker room. I was in it quite a bit, and it's Ooh. it's a very nice locker room. Well, it has to be better than what Candlestick was. Candlestick it's a was, very nice locker room. Candlestick was, I mean, Oakland was so bad, but yeah, Candlestick the was the second worst I'd ever been in. And they were selling tickets for people still watching baseball games sideways. The football oh, yeah. field is over here. Nice. It was, do you remember that? Oh, yeah. And they, had, they, had, they were the first place I ever went to. Um, uh, prison bathroom, no doors. Love that. Oh. Yeah, there's a lot of those. They had three dumpers, and there was no doors on them. So you could just kind of look at each other in the mirror that was right there. And there was mm-hmm. carpeting in the bathroom. Mm. That's wonderful. It was pretty cool. It's, it's pretty old yeah. school. No, it's, that's perfect. You piss on the seat or you miss the toilet. You don't have to clean anything. Soaks else. right in. That's genius. Yeah, and I, I couldn't even that. imagine the decades of that that happened with <laughs> meatheads like you're thinking. Uh, what? I just remember the locker room being tiny and in there. You're saying Santa Clara one, brand yeah. new. I mean, beautiful. you feel like you're in a home locker room when you go there. Baltimore. I don't think I... I think I'm just indifferent because I don't remember anything. I don't remember Baltimore. Me and Baltimore Baltimore's not bad. That's what I'm saying. I assume it's just like... Yeah, uh, not bad. But, I mean, you remember the bad one. Yeah, only the bad one. Only the bad, and there's a lot of bad ones. There is some. As it should be. They try and make Two-way it uncomfortable for you. Yeah. Not anymore, though. With these new stadiums, I think they're trying to make it. Make as, it a little better. Yeah, because they're hosting events and people are using they have multiple these. locker rooms. Yeah, so. like the Colts locker room isn't even the Colts locker room. It'll be somebody else's locker room. They take names down. Actually, mm-hmm. mm. it's a wild thing. Uh, so here we go. Hey, that was that was good sports media. There we go. Good seg. Boom. More confident Great. in the San Francisco away locker room. Uh, joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is a man who. In his second year is the Sioux Falls uh, segment's over. <laughs> Thank you. Hembo over. It is Hembo over. In his second year as the Sioux Falls head coach, he won a national championship. Wow. In his second year as the Washington Huskies head coach, he took him to the national championship. Damn. And now he's being tasked with following in Nick Saban's footsteps as the head coach at the University of Alabama. Ladies and gentlemen, friend of the program, Kalen DeBoer. Yay, Coach! How are you doing, Coach? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fantastic. Two quarter zips. Love what you're up to. You know what I mean? I love I love what you got going on down there. Uh, you look amazing. Where are we? We're recruiting right now? We're on the road. We're on the road. Yep. Pulling over to the side here to spend some time with you. So 
It's a great day. Well, I appreciate you doing that for us, and obviously we'll let you get back to work as soon as possible, but I have some questions for you. Coach, all we're hearing is about everybody that's leaving your program right now, Alabama, but there's like 100-some guys on scholarship, right? How, how come nobody's talking about who has stayed around, and do you have an opportunity to know all these guys that have already stuck around, and did you talk to the guys that left? How do you kind of feel about where the roster is right now at Alabama? Yeah, I think in a short amount of time, I think our staff's done an amazing job uh, just really getting to know these guys. And, and uh, you know, I think there's 28 or so guys that uh, I think when you look at it from a, from a whole piece uh, have entered the portal, but really about 18 to 20 of those guys were gone before we even had a chance to be here. So, okay. um, you know, there's a few other guys that I think were just kind of holding on and, and had other places to go. So, um, you know, maybe there's six to eight guys maybe tops uh, that have entered. So I, I think our staff's done a, a phenomenal job. Um, as I said, most of those guys were were gone before we even had a chance. And so it's just the time and way of uh, college athletics and especially college football. Um, certainly understand that. But we've had a chance to get around our guys. And I think they're really starting to to feel the vibe and feel what we're going to become. i um, excited about this journey with them. I'm excited for them to get to experience you as a coach because obviously I got to for like a day and a half up there in Washington. Your players all loved you. The vibes were immaculate. It was a professional outfit. That's why I thought you were the perfect guy to follow Nick Saban in this impossible task of taking over the Alabama head coaching position. And whenever you say like eight guys and 28 all together, tw- most beforehand eight guys, how many guys are still there on scholarship out of the whole? Because I don't know the exact numbers. What is the number? Yeah, I, I mean, I, the number I'm working with, you know, is what we're going to be this fall, you know, and uh, we still have a few to work with, but it's it's not that far off, you know. We're within uh, – yeah, but what is that number? Seven. Is that like 30, 40, like 20, 30? What is the number of people that stay? Because my point is, all anybody talks about is Alabama being the number one recruited class all the time in the amount of five stars. And then people are like, well, 18 guys left. It's like, well, there's still 50 five stars. Mm-hmm. Like, there's yeah. still, right? Isn't that kind of, this is the most exactly amount of talent right. you've ever had, I assume, whenever you walk uh, into a locker no, room? No question. No question. And what's really cool is these guys are, you know, they're the heart and soul. Um, they're the ones that are going to bring this whole thing to life. And, you know, the, the guys who are with us right now, they have just like, you know, sunk their teeth in, uh, in, in another level. Um, they're hard with, uh, they're hard at it with the workouts. It's going extremely well. Um, you know, checking in with, uh, coach blue, our strength coach, he's just, um, got them rolling. And, uh, you know, for them, uh, there was a little bit of time where there was some uncertainty and I think we've really kind of calmed things down and feeling good about the direction and what's going to happen here this spring. But, you know, the core of our, the core of our team, um, is right here, and uh, they they have a chip on their shoulder. You know, they they uh, they want to win that national championship. Uh, they had it right there in their in their grasp, and uh, these guys are already turned the page and moving on, and excited about what our new staff is going to do, building on what Coach Saban has done for many years here at uh, Alabama. You both have in Michigan end your year is something I assume you could have bonded upon, but with the way it's been happening and covered since you got to Alabama, I assume you have a chip on your shoulder as well, which is a beautiful thing, especially for a guy that is former player, loves ball, coaches the hell out of teams. Like, I think I'm excited to watch the entire Alabama story come together, and you've had immediate success in a couple of different places that you've gone to, and I think that's a tribute to the type of culture you're able to instill quickly and the way guys buy in. Jalen Milrow staying down there is obviously a massive piece, I think, of the puzzle and of the pie, having a quarterback. Yep. When you talk to this offense, do you say, hey, boys, I know you didn't get a chance to watch the Pac-12 much last year, but with our offense with Grubb, we had three guys averaging over 100 yards a game. We had two of the top wide receivers in the entire country, and if McMillan doesn't get hurt, probably three of the top wide receivers in the country. Are you selling that? Are you talking to them about that? And what do you think about being able to have SEC talent? No offense to anybody in the Pac-12. I don't mean that. Please don't take it that way. You don't mean any offense either. But having an option to have now SEC-type talent at those weapons, what do you think your offense is going to be able to do down there in Alabama? Yeah, that's certainly a big piece of, uh, you know, these guys here in the program understanding what we've been. And, you know, we were on national TV a lot, uh, enough for them to see what we were doing and uh, be excited about their roles. You know, you talked about Jalen, you talked about uh, the receiving core. And, uh, you know, these guys are fired up about uh, getting those opportunities within this offense. Uh, You know, Dylan Johnson was our was the the leading rusher in the Pac-12. You know, and so, you know, all the skill guys, um, they're fired up and 
um, ready to, to learn the system and uh, continue to grow. And then, you know, just defensively bringing in Kane Womack, an experienced, uh, you know, head coach from South Alabama who I've worked with before at Indiana. Um, I'm excited about what we're going to do defensively and building on the great tradition of defense and uh, what, uh, you know, what physical football and uh, good, solid defense is all about. Now, obviously, everybody has said, including yourself, Nick Saban is able to do whatever the hell he wants. If he wants to pop back in, I think he has an office office at the stadium. Have you been able to lean on him at all whenever you're visiting these new areas down the south, potentially, as an Alabama guy? Has he been a part of any of this process? Or how do you think that's going to kind of play out as a man who just decided, you know, to retire after the greatest of all time career being had? Yeah, I mean, I'd be pretty foolish if I didn't yeah. uh, lean on him and uh, have, a, have a door that was open for him to come and and uh, see it and, and uh, you know, for me to reach out for advice. Um, have done that uh, quite frequently, especially uh, the first week. And, uh, you know, he, he uh, will be someone I know. I appreciate him having uh, his line open for me at any time. You know, he, he built this program to the point you invest so much in it. You know, I, I know that he wants nothing more for this pro other than for this program to continue to build on what he's done, all the work he's put in. Um, he just doesn't want it to go float off into, you know, into space. Uh, he wants it to be great. Yeah, it's great to hear. We got a chance to chat with him all season, mm -hmm. obviously. And as soon as he started doing that, a lot of people were like, he's retiring. There's no way he's doing this and still going. And then I don't think he knew that he was going to do that at the beginning of the season. It kind of all came together. But down in the south, you know, it's different down there. You know, I, I think I got a chance to experience that with college game day. The expectations, especially at Bama, are going to be absurd. Have you had any, oh, it's different down here moments yet on the recruiting trail or heard anything or read anything? Yeah, I think just even just arriving, you know, you, you land and you're going to meet the team and just the reception of fans, uh, you know, being there. Um, I mean, that, that, uh, that was really neat for me and my family. And, uh, you know, being around the game uh, long enough, I understand uh, there's still a difference and some things that uh, will come with it being here in the SEC. But, um, you know, it's uh, it's an intensity is what we look for. You know, you come to Alabama uh, to to be with the very, very best to compete at the highest level. And, uh, you know, that's what I you know want to do everywhere I've been. And so I'm not going to be shy away from how important winning is. Um, I think that was probably something that was attractive from uh you know greg Byrne and and alabama towards me uh, i'm not going to shy away from that but you know we're going to continue to do things uh with the alabama standard always in mind and uh, continue the winning tradition yeah i heard you say that at the basketball game the standard mm -hmm. was bama mm -hmm. roll tide <laughs> yeah. big pop out of there it was good speech. hey good speech now i had fallen asleep i did not get to see that live i saw it the next morning <laughs> yep coach which is something you know that kind of yeah happened. you've done that before with me yeah and I was wrong. I told you I was wrong. I've told you numerous times I was wrong. I'm sorry, halftime, Pac-12 championship. I fell asleep. Whoops. Holy hell, Oregon won. <laughs> and then wake up the next morning, Coach DeBoer and the boys yeah. are on game day. I'm like, okay. No, they didn't. Way to go. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of been – your team, though, has always been like that. And we talked to Saban all year. He felt like that locker room was a close one, a tough one. It feels like your teams kind of embody that as well. That's why they're able to withstand the late adversity in multiple games this year and the final run is the Pac-12. How quickly can you feel if your team is the type of humans that you want? Like, you know, and I assume Alabama's always going to have the type of humans you want. But how, how quickly can you feel like, okay, we're – getting somewhere when it comes to the culture aspect yeah well i think think you first look at right now even with uh the guys that are returning and just uh, you can feel that that closeness that they have and that's a tribute to the coaching staff uh coach saban and everything that they built um it's not just a bunch of really good football players out there that uh you know won the sec championship it's guys that really believe and came here for a reason it's continued the legacy you know of alabama football and build on their own um, and I, I truly believe that because there was so much noise and there, there still will be uh, noise outside the program. You know, people who are trying to to come in and just, uh, you know, put a little doubt in their mind. And uh, they've really, you know, the nucleus of this team and the, and the program is really these guys have stayed the course, you know, and really hunkered down and uh, ready to go back to work and continue to, you know, prove some people right, but also prove some people wrong. And uh, it depends on what side of the line you're on. So. Um, I think you can feel it pretty quickly, uh, and that's going to be the great challenge, and that's that's what I love to do is continue to bring these guys together, bring our staff together, all for a common goal. And so I'm excited about this 
opportunity, which I know is an ongoing challenge each and every day. Hey, you and me, uh, pretty fair skinned. You know, down in the south, that sun is different, bro. Careful. You know what I mean? Let's make sure we get a full. I got gotcha. you. You know, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, we're gonna need that. You know, I was down there <laughs> for uh, three hours for my show. You remember? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I got third degree burns on my face. Mm -hmm. it just, it was not a good day for me, coach. It's a little different in Washington. Beautiful in Washington. Beautiful. But that sun, for some reason, down there in Alabama, and then when they play Dixieland, the light. Ooh. Oh. Place goes ape shit, coach. Yeah. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, coach. Pat mentioned, uh, you know, with Saban being on the show this year and everyone saying, "Oh, he's going to retire." Like that—that that happened all year. But I think when he actually did retire, everyone was still kind of shocked. Um, did that kind of shock you as well? And then also, like, when the process of getting the Alabama job, like, it came together pretty quickly. Uh, how difficult was that decision? What went into it? And ultimately. You know, you've you've mentioned everything that goes into you know coaching at Alabama. Was it kind of one of those things where it's just, hey, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to go to one of the best programs in college football, and also on the heels of Coach Saban? But how did that kind of all come together so quickly? Because once your name got brought up, it was kind of like, oh, okay, yep, they found their guy, and they're going to do whatever they can to make for their... us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think first of all, I think everyone was is surprised. I mean, you know, uh, coach Dave has just done it for so long and, uh, has it, has it rolling. And, and as I've, you know, I would say the, the cover's not bare with, uh, who's here in this program from a player standpoint. Um, you know, he's just was relentless every single day. And, uh, you know, when you see someone give everything like they have, um, you think that it's just going to continue on. But, uh, I think probably just like you, um, you know, you're, we're all a little surprised, but, um, uh, you know, when it get the opportunity, and, and like you said, it happens really quickly. Um, you know, when you and, and when you invest so much into a program like I, I did at Washington, and that's the only way you can do it is just jump all in at a place, uh, whether it's building relationships with the players, um, you know, the people around the program, the alumni. Um, that's how it has to be done uh, for it to really be successful. Um, it was a hard decision. You know, I felt like there was unfinished business. You know, um, at Washington, coming up short of winning the national championship, which was our goal. Um, but I also saw this as just an amazing opportunity that uh, just could not pass up on. And uh, to be the head coach uh, at Alabama, and uh, you know, um, I'm not shying away. I understand the the way that uh, it gets perceived with following uh, a legend. You know, um, but there, you know, there's been another legend also in this program, and Coach uh, Saban had to follow in his shoes, and so. Um, this program uh, was built with great foundation, and I can't wait to continue to build on the, the great ones that have been here before. Yeah, and if you're able to do that, I mean, I had an opportunity to watch Andrew Luck, you know, immediately after Peyton. You have to have a, I don't want to say maturity, because obviously you're a head football coach, you're obviously a mature person, but like the way you have to view things, because if there is something that happens that goes astray, they're going to say, well, Saban would have done this. Saban would have, you know, you're going to have to hear that regardless, though, if you want to be the top coach in college football. So is that your view on it all? Is that kind of the thought or how do you expect to keep those noise out? Yeah, I think you just got to be convicted in who you are as a person. You know, you got to believe that, you know, your experiences and, uh, you know, how we do things is, is, is going to work and uh, can work anywhere. And I believe that um, we'll build a great staff that I know uh, will have great perspective and be able to handle you know, those, uh, those, those things that, uh, people throw our ways and, and trying to bring doubt, um, you know, that can't be sustained, but, um, you just gotta be convicted in who you are. And, uh, you know, I've had success at a lot of places and I feel it can carry over a lot of times. It's just about simply building around people and, uh, the relationships and the X's and O's and things like that. Football is football. Um, and I, you know, I'm getting a, know this part of the country very quickly um not completely inf not familiar with it but uh you know got some people around me that certainly are and so we're hitting the ground running i'm excited about it building all these relationships and uh you know make, making uh, this next season you know not waiting around not not uh, rebuilding but reloading hell yeah great way to phrase it too uh on that note darius has a question for yeah, you speaking of, on the people around you coach what is that process like putting that staff together making those calls and i know in the nfl a lot of times a lot of things stay in place you know nutrition training room equipment room those guys stay around forever what's that like for you uh obviously moving on to alabama yeah it's so critical you know, because it trickles down Do you know, the, the vibe and the, the culture that you want in your program, it starts with your staff and the players will bring it to life, uh, but they have to have the buy-in and the people uh, and that we care truly about them. And uh, you first and foremost, not just 
the football aspect of it. So uh, I'd love to take more time, but in the in the days uh, right now that we're in, and uh, you know, mid mid to late January already, um, you don't have a lot of time. So yeah. fortunately, I got some some people that I'm connected with, and uh, you know, feel really good about. And I think we've really done a really good job, um, you know, building the st- the coaching staff, um, you know, the off field staff. Many of the people here um, have done an awesome job, and so you can't help but look at them and uh, you know give them a chance. And, and looking forward to that partnership with them. Uh, Saban thought you were gonna, yeah. Okay, All right. I guess I'll. Take it. <laughs> I guess you know it would be dumb not to do that, don't you? I mean, honestly, I think that's the humility that you have, mm-hmm. but also the success and the amount of football that you've coached. That as soon as we heard you were the guy, it was like this is the right hire. Mm-hmm. There could have been a lot of other names, and obviously they could have hired within, which I think some people expected. But after getting to know you in the way you operate, it's like this seems like the only person that can maybe do this. Yeah. Now, on that note, whenever you hire from. You know, a successful school with a great recruiting class into another school with a great recruiting class. There comes a lot of questions. Go ahead, Con. Yeah, Coach, you've mentioned there's been a lot on your plate, and clearly you've had to deal with a lot. But when you do kind of take that next job to Alabama, what are your conversations like with the recruits that were going to Washington and the recruits that were going to Bama before knowing that you were the head coach? I assume there's some emotion to it, but also, do you have to, you know, sell yourself to a lot of the Bama guys and? try and get some of those Washington kids to come with you or, or how does that go um, kind of once you take that job? Yeah. I mean, you know, first and you know, foremost, you want to make sure that the guys are committed, that you're understanding, evaluating them. And, you know, I think the biggest recruiting and the best recruiting we've done is still our current roster. Um, you know, there's not really portal guys, uh, um, you know, cause the portal window is closed other than those that have coaching changes. So, um, we've had to recruit our own roster, and uh, I think we've done a great job of that. Uh, and, you know, in regards to yeah, – There's guys 55 who, Alabama guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doing that, that first. Is, okay, coach, that is just such a wild thing to think about because everybody's talking about this guy's gone, this guy's gone, this guy's gone. But every year during recruiting season, we're like, Alabama's got five mm-hmm. deep mm-hmm. at every position. And then you watch them jog on the field like we have for these mega casts, and it's like they got six foot five, four three for her 45 seconds coming out of the yeah. out of the tunnel that, that I feel like that's a pretty smart play over there coach yeah you know this uh, the the nucleus and the core is going to be the guys that are here you know and I experienced that just two years ago we kept the nucleus and core for the most part together uh, and uh, you know that's the heart and soul of your team and then additions that you you get a chance to bring in um, you know I want nothing but the places that I've invested a lot of time in to be to be successful in the future and that's uh washington that's fresno state those places are special places to me and uh you know you want to be a part of the legacy looking back that you continue to build on that and uh, the people after you uh they made it even better than when you were there so um as far as a few guys there were some guys in a portal and if they're going to go anywhere um other than being at washington i certainly am going to want to have a chance to have them here because i trust and believe in them not just as players but as people so we've had a few of those situations here in the last week deba what was his record at washington uh, i believe it was 25 and 3. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. this guy sucks yeah. <laughs> i mean it is coach I, I think a lot of the people are just getting to know you you know because mm-hmm. probably only saw you in the playoffs i assume that's really the only time they got to see it now washington was obviously covered this year a lot hopefully everybody feels that way from the washington people by college game day but the national story hasn't been washington for like two decades or whatever so i don't think a lot of people have really known the way you go about doing your business and how you win I'm I'm pumped to see you with SEC resources. Now, SEC, though, potentially does bring some change. Go ahead, AQ. Yeah, Coach, I loved watching your offense. And by the way, as a former offensive lineman, I loved your group. Having said that, you guys were pretty wide open offense. Down the field, chunk plays, get it down the field. Are you going to be able to run that same style offense in the SEC, or will that have to change? Yeah, I think that I certainly think we can. Um, I think the heart and soul of it still is that you have to be physical, and your offensive line has to be great. And um, you know, our running back, Dylan Johnson, um, you know, was yep. right at the top uh, of the conference rushing the football. And so uh, when it came down to it, that's who we that's who we were and we believed in it. Um, and with the, the, the personnel we have here, uh, you know, there's some amazing running backs in this program. Uh, I've seen first and firsthand, you know, who these guys are. And, uh, you know, the offensive line is always a huge piece of the success and where it all starts. So um, I think what we've done 
uh, you know, you always tweak it here and there to fit your personnel. Ryan Grubb and our offensive staff, uh, they will do exactly that. You and Grubb been around a long time, I think ever since Sioux Falls. Uh, Zito just told me your overall head coaching record is 104-12. and 12. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Yep. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> Jesus. Get it done. Is that good? <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Well, last question here for you. 126 games coaching. Mm-hmm. 104 wins. Pretty good. Pretty, but Sioux Falls doesn't count, obviously. No, no, no. you know because <laughs> it's vastly different. Even though you're playing with Sioux Falls guys mm-hmm. and you're playing against that, win, winners win. I think that is literally what everybody says. Football is football. Football is football. We're Boom. still tackling, blocking, kicking, throwing, mm-hmm. running. Right. It's all the same. We're excited to see you now at this level. Uh, not that Washington wasn't, you know, yeah. but you get it. SEC at Bama is a big deal. Speaking of, last question here, yeah. Coach. Coach, you uh, talked about learning the South and all the areas around there. Um, one thing, uh, Brian Kelly, when he went to LSU, he immediately adopted a Southern accent. Have you thought about <laughs> taking a similar approach and just uh, immediately talking with a Southern accent um, just to help with recruiting down there? I, I think that would go wrong for me. Uh, I just know who I am, and uh, there's there's some South Dakota in there, and uh, you know that's that's who I am. So uh, we just got to live with that. Family. Uh, you got me for who I am. What is that, Canadian, Dakota? Does it sound a little Canadian, or what is it? What is the Dakota? I think so. It's, it's on the verge of that, I think, once in a while. But, uh, uh, yeah. Because the top of America, Minnesota. Yep. Michigan. Michigan. Up, upper Peninsula, Michigan. Mm-hmm. I think I assume the Dakotas, there's a yeah, little. Definitely. A, don't you know. Yeah. That a type boat. Of, yeah. I don't hear that out of him. <laughs> it's only my, a year from now, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. all of it. You can't help it. A lot of it, y'alls. With it being around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to inevitably happen. And hopefully, you'll be down there in the next 15, 20 years, just like Saban was, doing great things. Yeah. We appreciate you joining us, Coach. Good luck on the recruiting trail. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you guys having me on. What state are you in? Are you in, a, are you in the South right now? I'm in the South. I'm in the South. Is it raining down there? Is that what is going Jeez. on? It's raining. South Florida? It's, it, we, it is definitely raining. So, <laughs> yeah. You brought some Seattle to the South. That's great. It's very nice of you. I'm sure. I home- was. I wasn't going to say it. I wasn't going to say it, but uh, I was thinking it. So yeah, it's a home game for you right now <laughs> yeah. with this rain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I yeah. stepped on your uh, roll, Todd. If you want to give another one, the roll tide. Hell yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Coach Kalen Board. Yeah, yeah. Coach. Yeah, because all the reporting and obviously any other school other than Bama that's in the SEC would like to shine a spotlight on the fact that a lot of people are leaving because that just affects recruiting for everything. Bingo. Bingo. You know, somebody could be on the verge of potentially going and then they hear, oh, did you hear, did you hear, sending links. So you got a lot of narratives potentially trying to be built by a lot of different platforms and a lot of different humans that certainly would benefit from an Alabama downfall. And then I just started thinking, like, how many scholarships are there? I don't know how many there are, but – they didn't say everybody on the roster left. Nope. And all we ever talk about is how deep Alabama is. And he was like, first thing we need to do is we look at the transfer portal. Okay, none of these guys are as good as uh, yeah. all these guys that are on scholarship right now with Alabama. Yeah, at our school. Which is what every other school was doing whenever that 30-day window, mm-hmm. which I think they're still in right now. Like, uh, how's the transfer portal? Cool, cool. But what, what Alabama is also available right now. We're going to get in there. So him hitting home. Yeah. Feels like the smart, but also those guys are going to take a lot of pride in like, hey, when they thought Alabama was going to drop off, because mm-hmm. yeah. Coach Saban, it's like a yeah. whole new angle they can go with. I do hope that he keeps around the tradition of all the you know old Alabama guys coming. Like, yes, it's hard Alabama, not to. It's a reunion yeah. every single yeah, yeah. game. It felt like every whenever we were down there only twice, but like Josh Chapman on the sideline, yep. a lot of the OGs in the building. I hope that remains, and I would assume that's what Coach Saban is helping with. Like, hey, we're still all in this Alabama family as opposed to just coaches and coaches. Because when West Virginia. Trans, change coaches. It was like we weren't even really allowed in the building mm. for a little bit. It was it was like, bad, hey, we're repainting pieces. a new narrative. This is who we are. Move to a new uh, conference. We go to the Big Twelve. It was like, yeah, Pat White, Steve existed, but not really. Here's Gino Tava, Tavon, which we're big fans of. Let's not get it twisted. But that like they wanted to start a brand new angle. I hope that doesn't happen with Alabama, and it doesn't sound like that's going to take place. And Kalen DeBoer. He's a unifier, man. His team quickly comes together. I talked about that Sioux Falls second year national championship. And then I talked about Washington's second year national championship. It's like he's able to get people to buy in and he's coached a lot of football. I feel like mm-hmm. he's gonna do it the right way now. That's gonna be big, not only for the program, but for recruiting. You know, because a lot of times you, you know you come to campus and you see a, maybe a, a Kirkpatrick or one of these greats around, maybe show you around, you know, do a little whatever. 
this and that. But um, so that'd be huge for him. And I doubt, you know, he wouldn't go that way. He'd be foolish not to. They're saying, okay, let's move the. Go ahead. Well, you just you mentioned like winners win. He's a winner. Uh-huh. Yeah. So like he and and he made a good point too because I think with like the transfer portal and everything, we forget about all the guys who transferred before he was the head coach, and all of those are just attributed to him. So it's like the narrative is, hey, since he's got there. 30 guys have transferred out or whatever when in reality it's only been and granted a couple of them have been pretty big names but it's only been huge Caleb six, Downs leaving yeah massive mm-hmm. now Saban's still there Caleb Downs not leaving any coach though especially with the option for every team to come in and tell Caleb hey we can give you this amount of money yeah, money that's yeah. gonna be tough to keep he's the best player in football is what like everybody says pretty much so losing him is a massive ordeal but you can't help but go back to the point that all we say ever about these recruiting classes is Filthy. They got yeah. Caleb was a freshman, true freshman last year. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Look at the league and how many guys you know, left Bama because they couldn't mm-hmm. get on the field and Bingo. go to the league and they're Pro Bowl, you know, mm-hmm. four or five, six time Pro Bowls and they couldn't get on the field at Bama. So those next guys that step up, you would expect them to be up to par now. Obviously, X and O's coaches matter, but then obviously he talked about it, like the character of those guys in that building is going to be a big thing too. He's that's a huge part of his entire. Yeah. yeah. He's, he was a very professional outfit over there in Washington. The way the practices were being run, I watch a practice, I watch a walkthrough, I got a chance to see a lot of the behind the scenes footage of him in a team meeting. Like he is just a very, just like Saban, it seems like. Sure. Like just like, hey, this is kind of how it goes. He's mature in coaching. He's been around long enough where I think his resume commands 104 and 12. That's absurd. That's ridiculous. 25 and 3 at Washington. It's like, what are we talking about here? There was a lot of people that are trying to kill him early because he's not an SEC guy. And, uh, you know, Saban started in Michigan State, mm-hmm. Big Ten. So it's yeah, like, yeah. can he go in there and, that, and you know, can he learn it? That's understandable, too. I agree. You know, you know that's I – mean, we've been down there like that is, you know, football country, SEC, so he's definitely going to have to come in there and prove himself. And now the landscape, it's like you got to recruit your your guys every year. So, that I mean, that's – That's the big difference. Yeah. I think it's a whole different landscape right now because you got to spend as much time keeping your guys mm-hmm. on the roster than – when we played, it was just, hey, listen, everybody's going to be here that we got. Mm-hmm. Now we just go recruit our 25 guys we want. Right? Yeah. Now you got to recruit 25 plus keep 75 <laughs> or 80. Yeah, the only time anybody would leave is if the coach was trying to force them to leave because if a coach took a scholarship, he'd look bad to that entire state pretty much for taking somebody's yearly scholarship. So nobody was ever gone. It was so like, just make them run the stairs for <laughs> six days straight. Hey, we got a 6.30 a.m. workout for who? Uh, backup middle linebackers. Yep. Just that one. That yep. seems... Like you're targeting? No, <laughs> just trying to get better. You want to play or not? And then he's got a 45-minute cardio session. Yeah. And then uh, tomorrow we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to get you better. What? You don't, you don't have to. You, know, you, you want to – we'll write a letter of recommendation for you to go somewhere else. That's what it used to be. Oh, that, that is. That was, that was literally well, – eight, eight guys getting in trouble for going out the night before and, like, two guys are let go of the other six. You know, all right, give them a second chance. Boom. Those two, I couldn't <laughs> wait for you to mess up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were waiting on a situation for you to potentially quit this team. Oh, you guys talked about culture, and if if the guys were good enough for saving, they probably should be good enough for DeBoer or whatever, keeping that smart decision. I looked it up. The two directors of player personnel were Chapman, Josh Chapman, and HaHa Clinton Dix. Ha Clinton Dix is still recruiting. He's out with the board, and, and Chapman is still listed as director of player personnel too. So yeah, that's smart. Probably smart. smart decision. Yeah, mm-hmm. Chapman was, I think, captain as a sophomore at Alabama. Jeez. Or captain as a junior. Hmm. Whatever it was, he was the first ever, and he's D tackle, nose tackle. He beloved by every human I think he's ever encountered. I don't think oh, yeah. there's ever been a person that has not, you know, enjoyed being around him. So I think he'll help keep the whole, you know the past mm-hmm. and the future together alongside HaHa Clinton Dix. I think they're going to do it right down there. Winners win. The standard is Bama. Yeah. Kalen DeBoer has won a lot of football games mm-hmm. as a head football coach. Yeah, and, I mean, you talk Bama players being pissed. He's probably pretty pissed, too, that he didn't win a national championship. Mm-hmm. So he's got something to improve as well. It's not just the players. Only people have seen him potentially two times. Exactly. And it's against Texas and in dogfight, obviously. Yep. Big time play. And then against Michigan, who beat him by – 20 some points. Yeah. yeah. And people are like, this guy, what are you talking? He just lost to Michigan. It's like, Michigan just beat Bama. So did you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, uh, they've been kind of built for everybody. Let's talk about Michigan. Jim Harbaugh allegedly in his second in person interview with the Atlanta Falcons today. Yeah. Uh-huh. After it is being said behind the scenes that Jim Harbaugh basically has to make up his mind on whether or not he wants to be the Chargers coach because allegedly Pete Carroll also wants to be the Los Angeles Chargers head coach and has been petitioning or campaigning for it behind the scenes. I believe Snoop Dogg was one of the first people to report that because of their connections at USC, but also it has been legitimized by others. So this Chargers head coaching search has obviously gotten pretty loud. They've interviewed a bunch of people. Um, Harbaugh in Atlanta, 
Harbaugh in L.A. What? Seems like Harbaugh's getting the treatment that we thought maybe Bill Belichick would get. Yep. Which is a wild thing to kind of think about. There's now a report about the Bill Belichick momentum potentially slowing down and the conversations about him getting interviews or allowed is maybe some agent spin to try to draw up some interest. AQ, we haven't heard really your take on this. There's a man who coached in the NFL and obviously played in the NFL. When Tom Brady became a free agent for the first time, I was very loud into a microphone on the internet. Like, every team's going to want him in the building. Every team is going to want to be lifted and play better. Every single department gets better when Tom Brady comes in there because expectations go up. Now, there are some teams that have had that elevation with greats in the past, whether it's here in Indy with Peyton or elsewhere. But nonetheless, if you're a struggling franchise, you're going to want Tom Brady in there. We thought the same for Bill Belichick. Allegedly, not that much interest in Bill Belichick, a lot in Harbaugh. What's your take on it? Why do you think that's the case? And how do you kind of see it unfolding? So I have so much respect for what Bill Belichick has done, but the biggest thing that we're not really taking, obviously all we see is the body of work, right? And so same thing with Tom. The two things that they have similarities with was Tom was 43 when he became a free agent. Bill Belichick's, what, 71, Mm -hmm. right? So how much more time? I think that's the biggest thing that you say. Like, hey, listen, when you're rebuilding and you want to start from scratch, it's like I need to get at least five years here. I need. Are you going to get that from Bill Belichick? I don't know. What does 77s look like? I don't think I know. It. On Bill Belichick? <laughs> I don't know what 77 looks like. I right. honestly don't know. I don't either. Mm. Looks like 37 on Bill. We saw him coming out of that little beach house. We oh, know, yeah, on the ring camera. We know that his body. Yeah, he's got a chest as a 50-year-old. Yeah, yeah, bingo. He's in basically the same shape as The Rock. But as Patriot fan, yeah. the question is not only can he last, but it's can he do what Bill Belichick does in 2024, which is obviously getting pretty loud, seemingly by the critics that said, we have been predicting all along that nobody would want Belichick. But Harbaugh, older, same exact style, seemingly, yeah, yeah. but he's had success as of late with Michigan, so he can obviously relate to the next generation. Is that what everybody's thinking? Yeah, I don't really understand why he wouldn't. I guess like the the age thing, sure, maybe, but that's the one thing I think doesn't matter. Like he's a lifer; he's going to coach in the NFL no matter what. I think the other side of it, like, hey, if Bill comes in here, are we just firing thirty people in our front office immediately, and then he, you know, goes and does his thing, which obviously is has been successful. But those are thirty people that have relationships in the building that have probably been there for a long time. So a lot you, of drama. A lot of drama. Yeah. Do you want to bring in a guy for possibly, let's just say, if five years is the minimum or the time period? Do you want to get rid of all those people for five years and then have to try and find all those people that you have been building? Because I assume for some of these teams, a little bit much, but we yeah, fifteen, reason. yeah, like uh, 10. 10. 10. E- even with those, well, the scouting departments. Then he's 30, 30 in. Yeah, thirty. Ross, be, pretty much. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Probably thirty. Okay, people. so thirty. It's like it, I assume Atlanta hasn't just hired thirty people where they're like, well, we can just fire them when we bring in a new coach. Like I, I'm assuming they like a lot of those people. So like, if that is the debate, whereas Harbaugh maybe is only coming in with a few of his guys, probably some players in the staff, but it's not as if he has a front off. Is there a front office to poach from at Michigan that he's like bringing a bunch of people with? Or? No, and I assume Harbaugh's going to have. Say in the personnel, but mm-hmm. he's not going to have to bring in the entire personnel department, which is him pretty much. Yeah, or be the GM. He's still pretty connected within the NFL yeah. circles as well. But another thing with Belichick, you know, we talked about Brady. Like, you know, what has he done since Brady has left? Oh, no. You know what I mean? So oh, no. obviously the body of work, we were all in the league while, you know, they were dominating. So we saw what it was. But that is a question for people. Yeah, a lot of people say he's built Belichick still have his fastball. <laughs> Brian Callahan got hired over. Yep. Uh-huh. Antonio Pierce got hired over him in Las Vegas. Yep. Tom Telesco got hired. Congrats to Tom. Hey, had a boy, Tommy. Tommy. And Antonio Pierce over there. Yeah. New head coach, Grizzle je- uh, veteran, GM coming together in the same division. It's wild. Hour two on the other side, J.J. Watt and A.J. Hawk. We hope you'll stick around. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. See you in three. Obviously, this is a conversation starter for everybody when they're talking about the dynasty. And there's still Raiders fans that are pissed off about this. Here's the game plan. Go out there in the middle of a snowstorm and make a kick that you're not supposed to make at all from 45 yards. This is the Patriots season on the line. Do you remember this moment right here in your head? Were you scared to death? Were you fucking pumped? I would say I was probably more scared to death as I'm watching the tuck rule review and realizing, holy shit, we get the ball back. Oh, yeah, by the way, it's coming all down to you, man. This will be a 45-yard attempt 
That's Vinatieri's luck from this distance of late. Once I got out on the field, I really had three thoughts. First and foremost, try to attack the ball, but stay light on your feet. Just like anybody, you're running on ice. If your cleats don't stick, you're falling on the ground, and then the ball's going to end up hitting your center right in the back of the head. I wasn't thinking about missing four of the last five, if that's truly what was going on. For me, it was all about, hey, you know, these guys aren't going to be able to get a good rush. Get it straight and get it above the line of scrimmage. And thank goodness, as it left, and I saw that they didn't block it, then it was all about I don't know if it's going to have enough distance in this snow you know let's hope for the best and, and I really didn't know until the, the referees at the back of the end zone raised their hands I couldn't really see it couldn't tell if it was good or not hell honest. yeah because it's a snow globe what a kick what a moment obviously that would go on to launch a dynasty that the NFL will never see again hell yeah. or before what a kick what a moment here's an overtime you gotta make another one substantially easier kick not just because of the distance but we called a timeout we cleaned a bunch of ground this is the one time that a coach actually icing me probably benefited us, right? Because it gave my offensive lineman with the big size 16 cleats to get out there and move a little bit more ground. And, you know, not to say a game winner is ever easy, but this one compared to the one uh, quarter before that was substantially different. So you're coming out here sighing a little bit of relief. Oh, thank God. I can see the ground. <laughs> I'm not going to fall. Right. We've right. already exactly. done this. Exactly. This is no problem. Tied. And then you murder that ball dead center. And then obviously in the Super Bowl, you have like a 49 yard that you hit at the top of the upright. Couldn't have been a better ball, I don't think. You hit it cleaner. You have something inside of you, okay, that not a lot of people have. And Joe Burrow seemingly is a guy that has it. What is that? I would love to tell you that I was born with or I developed the ability to, you know, be a clutch under pressure. I do think that there are certain people that are born with the want or the ability to say, Michael Jordan, you know, Tiger Woods, Mariano Rivera. These guys are, or and ladies, are the type of people that go, I want the game coming down to me. I want to be the reason... LeBron, you know, I want to be the reason why we win or lose. I was kind of that same person, you know, playing soccer as center midfield and baseball. I either wanted to pitch or catch. I leave it there. I know what you're thinking. No, no, Knock no, it no, off. No, I know you. No, anyway, no. but I, just, I, I always wanted to, you know, be in the middle of the game and be the reason why. So once I get to football, obviously 59 minutes of the game, I'm standing on the sideline. But I guess this is the one opportunity that I can put exclamation on the game or. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this wide trenches Wednesday, January 24th, 2024. Hour two of the program starts now. Football! It is beautiful. Football is wonderful, and we get the chance to talk about it every single day. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Don! Cowboys Tone Diggs is here, looking phenomenally fit today. Thank Tyron you, I Diggs. appreciate that. Yeah, you got your haircuts, too. Did get Ooh. my haircuts. That's a, that's, a big, I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah, you've always been a hat guy on this particular program, mm -hmm. more specifically since COVID. It happened, not right. saying anything else. Jeez. Since COVID, you've been a There's COVID a cowboy, mm -hmm. and then he became a hammer Don cowboy. Mm -hmm. But your hair underneath is reaching to a place that is phenomenal. Yeah. There, will, there will be a day where we're going to hang up the hat. We're going to put it on like something right behind you there? What? Hanging up? Wow, what's that all about? What do you mean, hanging up? No longer a cowboy? You're Every gonna... cowboy at some point has to ride off into the sun. Well, every rose, rose has its own. There's a day. Yeah, but yeah. they don't take their hats off. They're no, still they cowboys. Well, it depends. We don't see what the wind does whenever they go over the hill. True. Remember, because they always ride mm -hmm. off the hill into the sunset, and then we kind of lose them. We don't know if there's a big wind gust that knocks I, the hat I off. Could do the, we could do the classic thing where I'm riding off in a horse into the, into the sunset, and I get shot in the back, and I slump over, and you don't know if I'm dead or not. Ooh, I like that mm -hmm. one. While you're getting your ass beat by the Bingo. horse. And then the hat falls off. Bingo. Okay. Then we know you're dead, though. Maybe. 12-year NFL vet. 
Super Bowl champion player and coach A.Q. Shipley's here. Hey, uh, Nine-year NFL vet, Darius J. Butler is here. Hey, Looking super cool today, D-Butch. I miss my cowboy hat, though. Oh, do you? I, me too. Because you had it for, I don't know, all of two hours before you couldn't get rid I of do. it quicker. Yeah, you did just give it away as soon as you were gifted a cowboy hat. Messed up. For the uh, college football national championship. Neither of these teams have anything to do with cowboys. It's like we're in Houston, Texas right now. Yeah, dipshits. Do you know this is the home of the Houston Rodeo? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Rodeo here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know Parker McCollum rode a, ho rode a horse onto a stage and sang during a Houston Rodeo in this stadium right here? Sorry, you guys don't have any culture or tooth or brains. Fools. Okay. We're going to wear these incredibly heavy and stiff yep. and kind of painful hats mm, bit. for three and a half, four hours mm -hmm. during that national championship. The cowboy hat is sweet, but it is a little stiff, yeah. isn't it? I think it was a good move, though. I think so, too. I like oh, yeah, it was love a good it. move. Are you kidding me? I look at mine all the time. It's in my. I love that cowboy hat. Joining us now <laughs> is a man who had a cowboy hat on somehow. Yeah. Uh -huh. Don't know how they made one. We said, hey, we need a cowboy hat for a bucket, like an actual bucket. Excuse me? College football national champion, Super Bowl champion, Ryder Cup winner, massive head having, the greatest jawline in sports media, which we were doing earlier, A.J. Hawk. Yeah. How's it going, cowboy? Woo! Going pretty well. Uh, Diggs talking about getting shot and slumping over on the on the horse. I mean, we don't really need to end a movie like that, do we? Sometimes you just have to. Or your life. That'd be Sometimes a great you just idea. have to cowboy. Well, Ton Diggs wants to kill the cowboy, anyways. He's, He's already been planning this for months now. He, you know, That's like Gone Girl. Probably the travel. I know what I realized There's from having reason. the cowboy hat from the national championship game. Traveling with a cowboy hat. That is a lot, especially someone that probably travels with multiple cowboy hats like Diggs. That would not be fun. I think he brings. Uh, multi-utility cowboy hat that fits in everything you know every costume he's going to wear one cowboy hat will work because you are right having to carry that thing around and keep it in pristine can't be touch anything yeah. and he can't wear it for the entire travel because you would have a headache this size you know forever <laughs> yeah it is, it is pretty high maintenance the whole cowboy hat yeah normally i know what outfit i'm going to wear like when we were traveling for the watch alongs so i'll i'll know what color i need super bowl week i'm going to have to bring a couple so it's gonna Ooh. be it's gonna be a thing Okay. A couple may, out there. may buy one out there. Yeah, you should get a yeah. Vegas cowboy hat. No, that's not the type of cowboy I am. <laughs> You're not a Vegas cowboy. More of a what? Texas. I'm more of a Texan. Come cowboy. on, a little rhinestone. Not a Montana cowboy. You know, there's different cowboys Texas. out there. You're Texas. a Texas cowboy. When we went to Texas, I, that's where I felt home. Felt it in your plums. I love that deep in your plums. Mm -hmm. uh, JJ, uh, sorry. <laughs> AJ, uh, there was a lot of conversation in the first hour about Kaylin DeBoer in Alabama. And then towards the end of it, we started talking about how the Harbaugh you know, kind of story, this potential coaching cycle has been what we thought Belichick was potentially going to be. Behind the scenes, allegedly, Harbaugh is the one who has to decide whether or not he wants to be the Chargers head coach. I say allegedly because we know nothing about anything. I don't think anybody does. Nope. We're talking about billionaires making decisions for their operations, but with everything we've been reading, Harbaugh and the Chargers are a thing if Harbaugh wants it, but then there's Pete Carroll who's lobbying for the gig, I guess, and obviously people have put Bill in Los Angeles, and then in Atlanta, Harbaugh's now doing his second in-person interview down there. It's like Harbaugh is the bell of the ball, seemingly, for this potential coaching cycle, and I think he's obviously earned it, AJ. Yeah, he has earned it. I mean, I guess it's I wouldn't say I'm surprised by it, but I'm surprised that it feels like the Chargers, that deal was locked up. How'd they let him out of the building if he's going to travel or do a zoo, however he's going to interview with Atlanta? I, I would assume, I mean, this is genius move by Harbaugh. Just keep, you know, keep playing the field. Let them know it just drives your price up, drives up how much more that they want you at that spot, whatever, I guess, whatever spot he wants. But also, like, when's he going to make a decision? Have they set a deadline? No, I mean, I guess that's the next step is we need to know an answer. But if you put a we need to know answer on Jim Harbaugh, you're potentially out of the running. Yeah. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, you know, he's I'm still head coach of Michigan. I mean, there's a lot of uh, – What do you mean? There's a lot to think about here. Wow. Respect him. He wants control, though, too, doesn't he? Doesn't, doesn't Harbaugh want a lot of control over the front office stuff as well? Especially coming out of Michigan, you know. Like, Michigan, he was – you're the guy. You are the one in charge of everything. The scheduling, the players, the right. recruiting, the team, how we're going to go about making the team, the strategy. Every, you're a part of it all. And I think you're hiring Jim Harbaugh to get that. I think that's what you would want as a part of the Jim Harbaugh hire. So I think these are two different places that seemingly are like, yep, we're in on Well, I agree. And, and uh, one of the things that that happened with the Niners, him and the GM butted heads, too. The guy who's in Jacksonville now, his name is escaping. Balky. 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 Him and Balky kind of went at each other, I think, towards the end of that relationship. So I don't think he's going to – he doesn't want that to happen again. How many years has he been in Michigan? Eight? 
Yeah, uh, something like that. 16, right? Yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, seven, eight years, a long time. Joining us now is a man who went into the Houston Texans Ring of Honor as quickly as any human in the history of getting into Ring of Honors. Hell yeah. There's only three of them for good reason. This man's one, an icon and a legend in H-Town. He'll be a first ballot Hall of Famer and a guy who loves statistics. Ladies and gentlemen, the owner of Burnley FC, currently... Bottom of the table again. Dude. Jeez. Sorry, not I'm just telling place, you. Not last place, though, right? Just report it. I just said bottom of the table. I didn't say last. JJ Watt. Here you go, JJ. Yay. Yay. Connor, I'm sick of your shit. Dude, <laughs> what did I do? I'm just I'm just reporting what the standings are, bro. How is that how this conversation starts? I don't like that one bit. I don't like it one bottom, bit. Bottom is a specific place. It is literally bottom. Like, do you understand what the word bottom means? Yeah, well, bottom. Right. Is, Listen, yeah. let's not. Yeah. Like, you didn't bottom. say bottom area. Don't you? Say power boy. Yeah. Like, let's. Don't you cast yeah, spells make you your in. words. Sheffield is below Burnley. <laughs> Oh, uh, so they're Not the bottom. actual bottom. Yeah, I said bottom of the table, though. If you think about a table, the bottom of a table, there are multiple people there. There aren't just one person at the bottom of the table. Yeah, but I think they call it the table is what the English people call the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the top of the table are, like, where the, the tops are. Exactly. The head of the table, Liverpool FC, top of the table. Well, Roman Reigns is the head of the table. For now, there's only one. Yeah, there's only one. That's our tribal chief. That's for now. What? Look at the polo today. Yeah, wife bought a bunch off of Amazon. 15, 16 bucks showed up at the house. I feel super professional. And also, fashion. This thing's a zipper. Oh! Whoa! Paul's Chest got lettuce. buttons, idiot. You see that, JJ? What are you wearing yeah, there? Breakfast nice. Club? That's super cool. I like that movie, right? Shout out, Bender. Shout out. So, do you buy the shirts for the sh Whoa, whoa. whoa. Yeah. Whoa, 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 they're hey, throttling us. Hey, hey, they're hey, throttling hey, us. What the hell is going on? I love that. No, they're taking over. Oh, my God. Oh, oh no. Is Indianapolis okay? It's a uh, live view. Relax. No. Oh, no. No. Not on Emmy Wednesday. Oh. Dude, dude, we had a full sports media segment earlier. Damn it. But then you had yeah. to go and bring it up Damn again. God. You said PFF sucks. Yep. God. I didn't say anything today. His fault. Yeah, you no. did. We heard it. Yeah, and everyone echoed your sentiments on the internet, too. Thanks a lot. Do you feel like a real hero? Everybody on the internet's smart. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, not everybody. There wasn't everybody agreeing with you. No. There was not everybody agreeing mm -hmm. with you. Um, uh, you. I mean, it was a very large majority, but okay. <laughs> All right, so how has it been this past week? Have you been? Have you found yourself Great. in the trenches continuing to defend your stance alongside the many that agreed with you, or did you see all the... No, I don't, I don't do that. I don't, I don't like, continue it. Like, it, I said what I wanted to say. I said what I said, and that's it. I don't need to go down a rabbit hole and continue to give more energy and time. So Hell yeah. Yeah, we're on to the next thing. What are we fixing next? Yeah. What, what do we got going on next? Uh, head coaching hiring spree where hardballs all over the place? Yeah, we got... Yeah, we got that going. Let's go. Let's dive into it. Let's see here. There's been a lot of interviews. Do you, you guys feel like there's been a lot of second interviews where generally I feel like in the past, like you said, people don't let somebody leave the building. Like on our second interview, we don't let them leave the building. But I feel like with Belichick, with Harbaugh, these guys have been doing second interviews, um, which I mean is good for obviously thoroughness and people really diving in. But uh, it just feels like in the past it's been a little bit more. Maybe it's just me. But it feels like it's been like, let's not let this guy leave the building. Now, over the last couple of years, they've been casting very wide nets, uh, seemingly. I think the Colts interviewed like 20 people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually For interviewed 20 people, and there's 80 hours worth of it. Because you're allowed to interview whoever. So they wonder, like, are you trying to poach information? Or are you actually interested? Who is potentially what you're looking for? Because sometimes some of these teams will interview people that are two polar opposites. And it's like... Do you not have a plan on what you want? Are you still trying to be sold on what you're looking for? And then is there a third party doing the hiring or is the actual, you know, ownership yeah. doing the hiring? It's a wild scene. But Bill Belichick, you talked about his second interview with Atlanta. Seemingly nobody else has interviewed him or been interested. How do you feel about that? I'm kind of surprised. I think we all are. I would agree. I'd be, I mean, I'd be fascinated to know if that's a situation where he also knows exactly what he wants and he's going to be specific with whatever interviews he may be taking or if it literally is nobody else has asked him. I mean, if you're not even poking around on a six-time Super Bowl winning coach, that's, that's kind of like the Lamar Jackson thing from this past offseason, you know, where it's like, hey, do you actually want to be good or do you just – 
Like, do you think you're smarter than everybody else? Like, maybe at least ask some questions of the guy that's got six rings. Yeah, we can poach some information potentially from Bill Belichick on his thoughts and how to build a champion. Now, people are saying... Wouldn't you be fascinated to sit in an interview with Bill Belichick? Like, gosh, I want to know what that sounds like. Imagine you're an owner and you have to interview Bill Belichick. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, let me see if you're good enough for... Tell me, tell me what you're all about. And Bill uh, having to act like this person matters. Yes. You know, that, that's a whole... That's a wild... And especially the Falcons, man. Like, I mean... Like he's got to be just sitting there in an interview like, 23. You want, God, do, I took your do, soul. Do you want me to pull up the tape? Like, do I, I, do you want me to just, should I just show you the screenshot or what, what do you want me to do here? I don't want to, but like, who has the answers here? Huh? Yeah. The, the 28 part or, <laughs> or the three part? You just tell me. You say, that's an interesting thing, but he's 15 yeah. away. Hey, there we go. Oh, be careful. Don't go be careful. Don't go a lot of full green is there. A lot of Don't be swiping. Zito, watch it. Watch uh -oh. it. If you want to go hey, to Safari right now. What is dirty graphics? <laughs> oh, yeah, we're bad, baby. Z, uh, baby. Hey, Z, we almost saw your search history there. You understand that it's probably just Very baby. dark place. No, no. You got, baby. you got a baby now. It's a whole different world now. Oh, you're right. Yeah. I deleted all that. Yeah. <laughs> Atta boy. Smart. Stop what would you delete? Stop all that. Give it a couple months. Like what were you deleting? What would you delete specifically? Nah, just the dark yeah. web. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, no. Um, speaking of the dark web, self reliance, good movie. So good. Yeah. Good movie. Loved it. Anyways, yeah. AJ has a question for you, JJ. JJ, say, let's say you were an owner of a team and you're Which interviewing you are. Bill. Yeah, you, actually, you are. So, yeah. Say you're owner of an NFL football team and you're, they're bringing in Bill Belichick and Jim Harbaugh separate days to interview. What? What would you ask these guys? What do you want to know if you're the owner of what makes this guy the right fit for us? Yeah, for me, a lot of it's going to be the structure of the organization and how you see everything fitting. Obviously, Bill Belichick having been in that GM role and the head coaching role. Um, some of those questions you want to ask are about, you know, what, how do you see this going? Do our visions align? And as an owner, you have to know what you want. Are you willing to give that type of role and that type of power to one individual person or do you want him to fit within the structure of your own um and then obviously with jim harbaugh having been out of the nfl game for a while having had extreme success in it but also having been out of it for a while um you just want to ask those types of questions and make sure that uh that, you know it's a it's the league changes very much year to year so you want to make sure that everything is still on the up and up and that he's obviously stayed with everything but he's he's been extremely successful now in both levels so I would imagine that he is going to be very successful whatever he does next. Allegedly, Harbaugh can accept the Chargers job if he wants. That's what's being reported on the internet. We are not making this up. This is just what's being. Pete Carroll, though, lobbying for Chargers mm -hmm. opportunity as well, uh, allegedly, behind scenes. It's like Pete Carroll, him and Justin Herbert would be a fun. Yeah. That what does would that be mean, a, though? Pat, what does that mean, though, if he's lobbying? Of course, that, everybody wants to be a head coach. Not everybody. Well, but it also confirms that he, like, they tried to say it was, like, some amicable, oh. like, like, he got fired. Like, that, oh, yeah. that's. JJ, yeah. they did this like the Premier League does to the bottom three teams. They just boom, yeah. They kicked them out. We don't want you. Uh, boom. Pete, Pete would be a great. Pete would be a great fit down there. I feel like in, in, Yeah, but he's uh, seventy-two. Mm -hmm. This is uh, this Old whole conversation shit. about it. Are they potentially aging Bill Belichick, Pete Carroll? These guys saying, nah, it's way too old. It's time to turn the page. You know, because Harbaugh. How old is Andy Reid? On it, I think he's I forty-six, think, maybe. Yeah. Uh, what the way? What the way he sets that camera for that interview he does? Mm -hmm. It's always right down here. Yeah. He looks younger and younger 65. each week. Sixty-five. Ooh. Sixty-five years old. Right. So it's been very well. I mean, Pete. Pete runs around. He plays catch before the game. I mean, he looks a he lot better than a whole lot of seventy-two-year-olds I know. You know a lot of seventy-two-year-olds? Not that. Not that I'm like. Yeah, that, Whoa. That didn't sound like I hang out with a lot of seventy-two-year-olds. Right. Yeah, it sounds like the pickleball stuff you got going on. A lot of pickleball. Hey, speaking of, of pickleball. we got Ryan Smith joining us in about forty-five minutes or so. He just openly said, "I want an NHL team." Yep. Mm -hmm. And we'll see what the NHL does. He said, "We can have a team next year. You want? We're already ready for it all. We have a team name, logo, what? arena, what? supplies, what? city, what? whatever you need. We Bam. can do this." And the NHL responded in a positive way. We'll be talking to him in about forty-five minutes. I don't think he's. Interesting. Yeah. It, are you in? Did you tell him about our interest in the NHL endeavor? Oh, yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. That's part of the oh, conversation. Yeah, oh, yeah. All right. Well, dude, just make sure I'm, I'm, I'm not that far away. I'll pop up there right now. No, you're in soccer. You're in soccer. And your team stays. Yeah. Do you want Football. him part of your God, organization? God, it's a valid question. Well, just look at the track record. How'd your team do this year, Connor? I'm so, like, you act like you're, like, yes, you won a lot of Super Bowls.
close. Every, you guys are incredible. Absolutely. Potter did current, not win a yeah. single. Well, thank you for thank yeah. you for he acknowledging my I, I like, contributions to those fans. rings. They're part of the journey. Yeah, fans I agree. Are part of the I journey. agree. Fans should say we and stuff like that. But when you're JJ Watt and you're talking to Connor, yeah, I don't think you should say, "All right, Connor, you got six Super Bowls." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that's a great lead in though. But I mean, this is a great time. Maybe we can kind of re- revisit this whole you know coaching search thing. As if let's say you were the owner of the Utah. You whatever. Know, whatever. Yeah. Maybe you interview JJ Watt here. Let's see if you were going to. Well, JJ doesn't owner. know anything about hockey. That's the problem. Uh, We've seen his clap bomb. It's weak. We've whoa. seen him on skates. He can't skate. Uh, this guy's from I Wisconsin. Could, I might. I might play for the team. I, I might go <laughs> out there and Jackie Moon defense. Jackie yeah. Moon, you singing in, in between uh, periods mm-hmm. would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Do the whole thing. By Dewey. Salt Lake feels what like. Would you, what would you name a Utah hockey team? I think they already have all that. The yeah, so, so I'm not yeah, going like, so to say single thing. Avalanche is taken. Avalanche is great. The like, Utah power. Yetis. Bingo. So that's the name you would say? 100%. Okay. Utah Soakers. I'm with for you on that sure. okay. Soakers. That's sure. the yeah, super- this, oh. this went down. Don't say that in about yeah, a half hour. Bed, you're well. over. The, yeah, the Utah Super Soakers, and there's just one guy quaking beneath someone else. Oh, my God. And the guy on the top has a Super Soaker in his hand because you don't want to do the Yeah, he's laying on his back. Yeah, he's on his back. He's laying on his back like this. He's shooting pucks at you. Yeah. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, you got, you got the skate. The skates are actually on. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and we lost it. Be ice. We lost it. Gary Bettman ain't it. watching this show, thank God. Show's, show's gone. Show's uh, gone. We're not getting a team. We're screwed. Well, who's we? Yeah, uh, you're, you've been trying to work your way in here from that little cabin here. That's a beautiful room. What yeah, beautiful. Geez. Where are you right now? Illuminati room. <laughs> uh, I'm in my kitchen. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, it's just a background. It's like AJ's. It's like AJ's. It's just a green screen. So you're on the island right now? You're on the island right now? Oh. Of, of America. What I, no. Oh, of no. my kitchen? Of my kitchen? Yeah. 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 What was he thinking? I am so I was like, what geez. island are you talking about? America isn't an island, asshole. Yes, it's got a yes, bunch yes. of 72-year-old friends. <laughs> Anyways, the uh, yeah. you're, on, an island. you're on the kitchen yeah. island right now? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Is that the oven behind you? What type of oven? We got like uh, an oven? Yeah, no, that's, Viking that's oven? like the sink. That's like the sink. Well, Jeez, big sink. Oh, you're so big. Wow. wow. Is it is now on your island? Native American style? Is no, I'm in a chair. What are you talking about? <laughs> Wasn't sure if you sitting got in a chair. Okay. All right. Well, we're happy to hear you're so successful. Way to go. What a wow. nice backdrop. There. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. My, uh, oh, yeah. Like the Thunderdome isn't a nice backdrop. You have your own playland. Let's not act like we're in like slumming it up there. Valid, but we're only here. You are in 17 different penthouse yep. mm-hmm. throughout this entire season. Yeah, it's not a playland either. Yeah, when are you going back to CBS, too, to your New York penthouse? When's that happen? Sunday. We- uh, no, on location in Baltimore. Very much so. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Right, let's, talk, let's talk about that particular game because, uh, obviously, this is the best team and best Lamar that we have seen, and m yeah. Bank is going to show up, and we cannot wait for that to be on display. Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City Chiefs have seemingly found it. They're in the middle of a dynastic run. Could the Ravens start their own dynasty? Lamar Jackson was actually asked today a hilarious question about, hey, Lamar, what do you like about competing against Patrick Mahomes? And here was his answer. I don't like competing against him at all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean he's a great quarterback. Um, definitely a Hall of Famer. Uh, it's not even a, it's a no brainer. He's definitely a Hall of Famer. Um, but it, it's just I believe it's just two 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 greats, um, up and coming greats, just going toe to toe. You know, like a heavyweight fight, heavyweight matchup. That's that's just what I see. I love it. Do you see it the same way? Yeah. And I think obviously there's four teams left, so everybody's great. But I think we got it right too with the four teams we have this year. Yeah, I 100% agree. I mean, it is two phenomenal quarterbacks. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, six AFC championships in six years as a starter is oh. mind-blowing. I don't think that we give enough credit or we understand how incredible and how special that is and how lucky we are to get to see this guy play at the, such a high level for a long time. And I think it's also partially because he has that mentality. He has that killer mentality. He has that, uh, like, the uh, the whatever it was, the uh, – the thing that he posted on Instagram. Why am I blanking? The thing about the clock. Clock. Good luck. Uh, good luck. That's what it was. Sorry. Good luck. Where they were like, yeah, saying good luck. And then he, he remembers that. He has all those things. It's a little bit similar to Tom and what he had. So, um, But Lamar is playing at an unbelievable level. The Ravens obviously took it to the Texans this past weekend. They played extremely well. I just... They're so well-rounded, man. Their defense is so strong. They can do so much on offense. They can run the ball when they have to. Lamar can run if he needs to. He can throw when he has to. Like, 
it's just so difficult to stop that team, and they just look so good. It's going to be a really, really good matchup, and I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Well, the Colts were able to beat the Ravens, obviously, but throughout the year, this Ravens team, whenever you're watching, and I've said this a few times because – it's kind of an enigma almost. You just look at the score and they're up two scores already. And it's over. And it didn't really feel like it. It just felt like, you know, there's a three and out, this happened, and then it's over with the way that offense and the way that defense plays. They smother people on the defensive side. And Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, a lot of mic'd up stuff's coming mm-hmm. out. They like, they like, <laughs> they like hitting people. They like they enjoy yeah. violence. Kyle Van Noy said it's not up on a wall or anything, but we don't we like, you know, violent football. I mean yeah. it's very obvious. I- the fact that Roquan ended up there and obviously they got Patrick Queen, like the, the linebackers that they have there are so, so strong. And the fact that Roquan just kind of got out of Chicago and got put into this situation on one of the best and helped make it even better than it already was up there, like he's a special, special player, man. It's a lot of fun to watch him play in that defense. And um, my former D-line coach, Anthony Weaver, is up there, and he uh, he helps coordinate all the pass rush, and those guys are crushing it with sacks and everything. So it's so much fun to see them. JD's obviously up there, Clowney making plays. Van Noy comes off the couch and is just dominating. So they got a really special squad up there. The bank is a great place to play. I've played playoff games there and it's a phenomenal atmosphere. So I'm looking forward to getting back there and seeing that atmosphere again because it's a really cool place and they do a good job. That's kind of been our like uh, our show's thing for the last five, six weeks as it looked like they were going to have home field advantage. It's like, I don't think the national media truly understands what M&T Bank Stadium is like. It, it, it is... Very loud, especially when the, when any team's playing good. Obviously, their fans are going to be louder. Sure. They're going to be more invested. That's just not. That's not bandwagon. That's just people have lives, and why am I going to invest as much time as I normally do in a bad team as opposed to a good team? People are going to be more likely to invest that in a lot of these cities and places. But when that team is playing, that place is bananas. Five false starts for your Houston Texans team, who I think had yeah, a phenomenal yeah. run this year. Obviously, young team. But let's go to the other game now. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, JJ, on the other side, uh, Brock Purdy, who pl- didn't play his best game. No, no one thinks that uh, against the Packers. But he also has been getting bashed a little bit, you could say. What do you think about him just as a whole? And you just said it about Patrick Mahomes. Six AFC championships in six years. Brock Purdy two NFC championships in two years. Is this kind of the dawning of a new day in the NFC with Purdy being that guy who just dominates? Or what do you think him and the Niners are going to do this weekend? Yeah, you know what I think? I think it's a problem uh, of today's you know media world where there's no nuance. You're not allowed to have nuance in situations. Everybody wants to have the take. Everybody wants to have you know that hot button issue or that topic. Like, Does he have incredible weapons around him? Yes, absolutely. Do they run an offense that's extremely effective and finds ways to get guys open? And also those guys just happen to be awesome playmakers? Absolutely. But also, does Brock Purdy perform well and get the job done and he's made the two NFC championships in a row? Yes. Is he sometimes doing it by himself and making these unbelievable plays? And is he Patrick Mahomes at this moment right now? No, I don't think so. But overall, has he done a good job? Yeah, he's been in the NFC Championship two years in a row. So let's not like detract and take away from that just because he's got an incredible team around him. I think the guy deserves credit. I think he takes more heat than he should. But also, they're a great team. They're just a great football team. Let's not like take away from that. Yeah, I think the issue with it all is we're going to find something to bitch about regardless. Mm-hmm. You know, Always. And Brock Purdy... Wow, he's not supposed to be as good. No. Nope. Team's not supposed to be as this go with him in there. But since he's been dropped into the fold, what are they, 21 and 5 or something like that? Mm-hmm. Yes, 20 and 5 or something like that. 17 and 3 when Debo's playing. And obviously, Debo, George Kittle told us yesterday, was a massive part of the game plan going into this game against the Packers. Mm-hmm. George Kittle said yesterday, uh, going into the game, I thought Debo was going to have three touchdowns. So <laughs> whenever Debo gets hurt early and they have to adjust, especially with the weather and everything, and then being able to find it late in the fourth quarter whenever they had to have it, it's like the kid's smart. He seems to have an yeah. incredible. And you guys know. Go ahead. You guys know with like a locker room too. Like there's a ton of huge stars on that team, a ton of big names. And the way that that locker room has talked about Brock, you know, they've come out and they've worn shirts and they've said he is him and all those things. Like you have to be a certain type of guy and a certain type of leader and a special guy to be able to go into that situation and perform well enough and also have the respect of your teammates and to be able to lead them at times like last mm-hmm. game, you know, in the last drive. Like, that, that don't discount for that either. Like, being able to go in there and handle that as a leader and as a guy that they look to in the huddle. 
So I, I have respect for that as well. That's not as easy as people think. That's another asset that he has that just says he's a guy. Now, is he six foot four? No. Is he running a four three? No. Have other quarterbacks in the past been his size or shorter or his speed or slower and his arm or weaker and had great success? Yes. And Brock Purdy is proving to have the exact thing. He can't run and play the same exact style as maybe a Patrick Mahomes who can throw it lefty and off balance mm-hmm. and everything like that. But what he does, he can extend a play if he has to. Yep. He finds good balance, so he has great technique and great fundamentals. And he, you talk about being able to balance all the egos. Like, that's good politic. Like, he has to go keep everybody happy. Not only with balls, we've seen it with a lot of wide receivers. Yep. Now, granted, I think that Niners locker room is laser focused on just success. We don't care who has uh, the numbers and stats. Everybody does, though. That is that is a real thing that happens and takes place. It just gets exposed in some places that aren't as good as many others. So being able to balance and coordinate all that stuff as the last pick in the draft. And I said yesterday, this guy was handed nothing. And I was talking about him in the NFL. Last pick of the draft, you you're not even on a team. Guarantee yeah. nope. you are no. you're not getting reps at practice like he was hit once he got in the building yeah he was drafted but other than that it's like you are very dispensable you are worth a last pick of the draft is worth nothing nobody's trading for the last pick of the draft ever nope. or anything so it's like he's had to work through all of that and just continue to go yeah. I'm nothing but impressed with the dude Le- genuinely yeah. and on the other side Jared Goff. He was kicked out to Detroit. Mm-hmm. What him and MCDC have been able to do have found an identity. It's beautiful up there with Ben Johnson's offense, JJ. It's awesome. It's really cool to see everything going on in Detroit. Like you said, even with the simple narrative of Jared Goff kind of being pushed out, Stafford going, like, I mean, I know I've seen it all week, but, like, possibly the most even trade in the history of trades. Like, everybody's happy the Rams win a Super Bowl with them. The Lions get Goff, and they go and do this now. Um, what they're building up there, I mean, the atmosphere that they've had in, at Ford Field these last couple of weeks and just how proud and happy and excited the people of Detroit are, it's, it's really cool. And I'm looking forward to that game as well. I do think – Who's that beer uh, truck like there? Tom, Who's that beer truck there, that Brock, tight end? Brock, Brock Wright. Wright. Yeah, that was awesome watching him get those knees up late. <laughs> you know, he was really running. Chest forward, that's best. Uh, that guy was ready to go. go Huge ahead, play. Jay. Yeah, no, I think Connor was right. Like, these four teams, it's an exciting time. It's a very exciting championship matchups this weekend, and the winners of these two are going to create a hell of a Super Bowl, whoever ends up being. 130 million people watching that Super Bowl, I'm predicting. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I mean, I think, Maybe even yeah. 140. Yeah. What was it last year? 114. Or 130. Who makes it? Well, and then, I think regardless. It, I think regardless. Yeah. You see these ratings numbers? Everything is up and to the right, seems like. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. last year, it's I thought. Every single time. Every time like the, the tweets come out, they're like, we have never seen a game with this many in the history of football. I'm like, I saw that last week. And they're like, this time. I mean, our CBS had 50 million plus viewers this past weekend. So it was it was awesome to see. It's incredible. Like, Did it peak the at NFL 50? is king. Peaked at 50 or 60? Like 56. 56 yeah, peak, say, yeah. yeah, and then the 49, it peaked at 49. I think it might have been 56, 56.1, 56, 56. I don't know. I, I don't have the exact. More number. than all the World Series games combined. That's uh, So with numbers up across the board just you know for these games, I would assume Super Bowl is going to be might peak yeah. at 150. the same type of thing. It's just like the NFL is the hottest show in town. I don't think it matters who's playing. Now, granted, Patrick Mahomes playing yeah. with Taylor Swift. Uh-huh. And Travis Kelsey yeah. in the middle of a dynasty run, people know who the hell they are. They're on a lot of commercials, so a lot yep. of casuals yep. know who they are, and there's a story to be told. Obviously, that's going to operate because football people don't like that, but that's just the fact of the matter. Yeah, you know, people that don't follow football every single day and aren't football people Why? are going to be more interested. Like, well, yeah, I don't know either. I don't. I don't understand. Like we show we show male celebrities on TV all the time. We show Matthew McConaughey in the sidelines of Texas games all the time. You don't see like these. We internet show Blueface at that. LA Rams game. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Blueface yeah. was in the swing. Kodak in the Panthers game. Especially with yeah. Super Bowl, like that's part of it. You have a large majority of people who are like just watching for the commercials. Like the spectacle is part of it. So if Taylor Swift's there, like yeah, yeah, a lot of people are gonna be tuning in just to see her going ape shit in a suite. Uh, we do have it on good authority from the New Heights podcast uh, that Tay absolutely loved Jason Kelsey. Yeah. Nice. So she's a human. I think she showcases that she's more that. human than it's tough not to. I mean, it would have been a pretty big red flag if she didn't like Jason. Bingo. Kelsey. That's what we're saying though. Mm-hmm. Like, and there's been not even a single like. Some of Taylor's friends don't know if that big drunk Yeti is good for her yeah. image. Instead, it's been a complete opposite. Well, I mean, Taylor's becoming like a football 
like a football. She's a junkie. Yeah. yeah, like she is all in, which I'm a massive fan of. Yeah, Entertainment Tonight also reporting that, you know, Travis has never been more focused about the Valentine's Day plans yeah. r- around the corner. So I think that's also, Shit. it's also helping with, with Chivalry's not group. dead, and we're thankful that she's dating a football guy, okay? We are very thankful that Travis Kelsey is representing football as well as he is for all the Swifties, because she's been in relationships before that have been public, and they've been with some actor, musician. No. You think Chivalry's happening? No. No way. Football guy. Let me hold that door for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. By the way, I'm 6'5". He's doing a good job, man. He's doing a good job. It's not easy. Like he, he doesn't have an easy place there to balance everything. I mean, obviously dating literally the most famous pop star in the world and also being on a team in the AFC Championship game and handling everything that comes with that. Like I, I think you got to give credit to Trav. He's done a good job and he's handled it all well and he seems to be in a very happy and healthy relationship. Hey, proud of you, Trav. Good work, Thanks, Trav. Trav. Hey, yeah, you know, at, the, at their soul, at the end of the day, Travis and Jason Kelsey, both just Ohio folks. Mm, yeah, right. You know, and that is uh, something that can't be forgotten. Ain't that right, AJ? That, that is correct. And JJ, staying in that game, let's say you were the D line coach for the Kansas City Chiefs. What what's your rush plan for? What do you tell your guys? Hey, how are we rushing Lamar Jackson? What do we? What can we absolutely not let happen? Number one thing with Lamar Jackson is obviously lanes. So you can't get too far up the field. You can't fly past him to create big lanes in the B gap. And you also don't want to rush too shallow. So then you create outside rush lanes where he can get outside of the pocket. But I would say first and foremost is not giving up those big gaps up the middle like you see right here, especially if you're in a cover five, which is man under too deep, um, which means that those guys are going to be running with their backs turned to Lamar and they're not going to be able to see him scramble and he's going to have 30 yards like that. Um, That's what a coach always tells you. If we're in man coverage, we are basically putting 100% of the onus on the defensive line to contain the quarterback. And that's where as a defensive lineman, you start rushing and you see him get loose. That is where you are just in pure panic mode because you know know. nobody's coming to help. I got to chase him and newsflash, I am nowhere near as fast as Lamar Jackson. So we are screwed. So it's, it's those lanes up the middle. So I tell my guys, I would tell my guys, you know, we got a guy, we got the two pushers in the middle. You can't get pushed wide like they did right here. This was clearly a design draw, and it was executed extremely well. Um, but And then just the outside guys can't rush past the passer. The problem with that is, as a defensive lineman and as a coach, you're basically kind of telling your pass rushers to not do what they do best, and that's play free and play loose and go get the quarterback. So it's a very fine line in balancing your D-line and saying, go do what you do best. But at the same time, rein it in a little bit. It's a hard place to be, and that's what Lamar does to you. A lot more discipline. Obviously, it's different uh, playing against Lamar than anybody else. I I assume it was similar whenever Michael Vick was playing back in the day. But the first time we played Lamar and they had a DB playing quarterback, I was like, well, feels like we're probably in a bad (laughs) – we're probably in a bad spot. Like, we just want to get a look for what it could be. And obviously, just punt returner taking it to the house every time. It's like, oh, yeah, and also – he can throw it 65, 70. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bananas it's weapon. It's impossible because, like, all your defenses basically are lined up to handle 10 people because you don't worry about – like, the quarterback is – he might throw it or hand it off, but he's not going to do much. Now you have to reconfigure all your defenses to count for that 11th person in any run play and any pass play. Um, it's fascinating. You know, I talked to TJ about it, obviously, because that AFC North – those guys all beat up on each other. And, like, the Steelers beat them twice this year, obviously the second time without um, without most of their starters. But, I, you know, you start to figure it out, okay, why do these teams have success but literally no one else can? And, and all those reps and all those things over the years just add up and they start to have a little bit better feel. And What's his just, record against the always, NFC? It's like 30-1 and one or something. Yeah, it's something absurd. Like 20, yeah, 21-1 and one maybe? Something like that. Yeah. I thought it was so hard. Dude. I thought it was 21-0. and 0. Who did he lose to? Yeah, I didn't remember the loss. He lost to... It's hard to uh, prepare if you haven't played against it. The AFC North, like Steelers yeah. know, like Tomlin is saying the same message against Lamar. Hey, just like we experienced last week, we just got it, or last year, we got to do this. Yeah. Whenever you're playing for the first time, you have six days to prepare yeah. for something that it takes years to maybe develop the discipline. Yeah. In the, Yeah, Lamar Jackson is 20-3 and three mm-hmm. against the NFC in his mm. career. Jeez. G- Giants last year. Tough to prepare for. Wink Martindale said, uh, I was at Baltimore. Here's what we need to do against Lamar. So now that the Chiefs are coming to town, and that D-line was talked about, D-Butt has a sports media question yeah, for you. Yeah, we had a sports media segment earlier that Connor just absolutely ambushed. That's not true. So bring you in on here. You did, too. Let's not get crazy. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, as a D-line expert, what you do power rank 
these last four uh, D line groups uh, left in the dance. Wow. Yeah, some that is some good uh, very on the spot. Tough question. No, sports media, dude. Welcome. Welcome to the boys. Yeah. Welcome yeah, to the great. Thunder, I mean, dude. Let's see. Let's see here. How do I get myself not just absolutely destroyed? I mean, they're, the all here. Ah, they're all great. They're all. No they, winning. They yeah. literally. Yeah, whoever yeah, put no that winning here. Though. You can just tie them, I guess. They're all tied. <laughs> Detroit. I mean, the Ravens, like, the Ravens have got, like, Matabuke is still underrated, in my opinion. Like, how he wasn't first team all pro is, in my personal opinion, criminal. Like, the guy had an unbelievable year. He should have been first team. He's. Uh, I don't know how he didn't. So, uh, dude, this is because I mean, there are some dudes on the D lines. I, I, I think I'm going with the Ravens one. I think I'm going with the Ravens one. Okay. Are you adding I linebacker really like, core into that as well? Are you doing front center no, right now? No, or no, 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 front. No, it's just front. Just front. You had linebacker core. It's two. I mean, there's, there's, you got Green Law and you got the, the the Green the 49ers and the Ravens inside linebackers. Those are the two best units in world hands down i mean you got patrick queen and we got two rankings. Uh, holy hell we wow. just ranked inside yeah. linebackers that's yeah. crazy now we're doing d line yeah. rankings that's so, huge. yeah no we're done we did it good job <laughs> no who's last who's fourth yeah, who's yeah the no worst we did it we did it we did a good job who's the worst d line still around say it lions one of the best against the yeah, just say it Chris everybody's Jones tied Chiefs. everybody's tied for second yeah no i mean if you had to like if if i truly had to do one right now i mean i I'll, I'll, I'd have to say it's probably Detroit. Oh! Bulletin board. There's some bulletin board material. There's more. Detroit. There's more. Hey. I mean, I. Thank I, you, I, JJ. I like not, wow. 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 I'm not. I'm, you don't I'm like the city of Detroit's like you, comeback story? I don't I don't like Hutch. Detroit. Listen to this guy, it. Detroit. Hutch is awesome. Uh, Minsky. I, I, I mean, I mean, it is what it is. I don't, I don't know. We it's gave true. you a lot of outs. You had three tied at second potentially. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, but I'm also I'm also here to play. I'm here to play the game. Hell like, yeah. you it's know, time to play the game. AQ's got his ranking. AQ would like to dive into Ooh. the sports media. I, is this I, D-line or O-line? This was D-line. Okay, who is it? I just wanted to see where he was at. I I also had the Lions last. Oh, oh no. no. Thank you, AQ. Last but of the AFC Bingo. AFC that's, champion, that's the last of the best like or phenomenal D-line. Matter. You got him right exactly. top five in the league. Yeah, top yeah, five in the yeah, league. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> top five in top the five league. Top five in the league. Which is very good. So you got Lions, and then who you got one? I had Niners, one, Ravens, two. Okay, got you it. You got Bosa, Armstead makes $115 million. You Marcus. got Chase Young. They got... Hargrave. Hargrave, who makes nine million. Strongly shaking off AQ. Hey, yeah, yeah, wow. Where's PFF? Uh, it's Avenger Tank. Where does PFF have him? Yeah, that's yeah, a good question. Yeah, what are oh, we doing? God. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Let's see what the world of imaginary numbers has. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look it up. Uh, why do you don't think, look it up? Don't you, look it up. Why do you think Baltimore over over yeah. Niners? You were very, you were very because in my head, why you said Baltimore I think they get you. home. Like I think I, I, now I'm now I'm I could really make myself look like an absolute moron here because I actually don't know the numbers. I don't have them in front of me. You don't, Who, you what, are, what are the sack numbers? Oh. Uh, what are the oh, numbers? Mr. Uh, Mr. PFF Stig. Yeah, these, no, these are actual numbers. These are actual numbers. I do think the Ravens did lead numbers. the league in sacks. I'm a pretty sack sure. is a real statistic. It is something that actually happens in the game. That is a real statistic. It is not some made-up Fugazi number of, I think you won this, Rush. Fugazi. Pass Rush. F- Fugazi, 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 Fugazi. How important are pressures, though? Nice. Are pressures <laughs> important to you? Pretty good. It's nice. Pretty good. That's a good question, AJ. Pressures are great. Yeah, yeah. no, they're great. They're, pressures are pressures are great. Um, I think it's big, extremely subjective. Who's deciding what is a pressure, what isn't a pressure? I think that's very subjective. I mean, I saw on the internet this weekend a massive debate about when Tony Romo said that Chris Jones caused that bad throw by Josh Allen. And half the people were like, he didn't even affect the throw in any capacity, and the other half were like, wow, what a pressure! He did affect it. Like, so who knows? If one person's grading it, they're not giving him a pressure on that play. If another person's grading it, they are. He literally caused the interception. So like. There's all sorts of different things, and that's why you just got to be really careful with subjective numbers like that where you've got um, all that going on. But The Detroit Lions were in Baker's Grill pretty much yeah. all day, and, you know, Aaron Glenn was scheming it, so now you also got to dive into the defensive coordinators, okay. which, J.J., I would like to hear you rank all four <laughs> defensive coordinators <laughs> that, are, yeah. that yeah. are left out Great. there. It should be yeah, uh, the four teams left, and obviously trying to dissect negativity out of it is going to be tough, and it is sports media as a whole, but, like, 
as I said at the beginning to you, I think they got it right. Like these four teams are yes. here we go. Mm-hmm. You know, like we, yeah. we have it right on offensive side, defensive side. I feel like the characteristics of the team are what we want football to represent. It's tough, it's hard nosed. There's electricity on the field for everybody. All four teams have electric playmakers that can come out of nowhere and make big plays. It's like Man, seven point dogs yeah. tough in the world. Yeah. What do you think? That seems excessive for an NFC championship game, does it not? Yes. Said their D-line was no good, so that's you – know. Yeah, you saw that. Yeah, it's moving to seven and a half. Yeah, right? yeah, the sports yeah. books are listening to you. Like a 10. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Dome is now being talked about for the Lions. You should see them at home. They're phenomenal. Mm-hmm. But open air, when there's fresh air coming in, can't play. Can't play. That's, that's what everybody's saying. Only like, it's supposed to be 70 degrees. I think no wind. But, yeah, the stats are saying – Open air stadiums, the Lions' worst nightmare. Uh-oh. Yeah. That's what they're saying, JJ. Well, I mean, that's what the Browns had happened to them. If you if you look at their stats from the season, they they were the number one defense in the NFL at home, and they were the number thirty two defense on the road. And then they went on the road in the playoffs and obviously had a very tough tough showing. So there, I, there's only a few factors that I can think that actually matter when you go on the road versus at home, and obviously the number one. <clears throat> for a defense specifically is crowd noise and being able to get the snap count and things like that. But beyond that, like over the course of a whole season, yes, in one game you might have rainy conditions or the grass is slippery or something like that. But for that stat to happen over the course of a whole season is a stat that I truly don't know how to wrap my head around. I fig- I cannot figure out how you would be number one at home and number 32 on the road. There isn't a real logistical reason why that would work. Well, it's because the hotels are choosing to stay in a crap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they need to up the logistics a little bit on the back end. They spent all that money on that contract. Yep. Wow. And then they started, you know, getting a little cheap on the plane and the hotel and the food. What? You know, they took... Were you, uh, were you in any of those types of conversations when you were... Because, I mean, obviously, the later you get in your career, the more you are kind of in those conversations. And people are looking for every advantage. So they're like... What do you think about how we travel? What do you think about our yeah. food situations? What do you think about our hotels? Yeah, I mean, Chuck having the punter say things to him his first year there was probably you know a little abnormal. <laughs> a little abnormal. Hey, you know, Chuck, we didn't fly on these planes before you were here. <laughs> that was that was it was just like, uh, hey, it is different now. The food, this is not what the food was like before you. Just a heads up that that is not. Hey, these hotels. Vastly different what it used to be versus now. Just a little ammo in you mm-hmm. if you need to, you know. And they did change to their credit of in the pl- the plane, right? Yeah, the plane was something. If our first trip was to buff Costanzo's leg was <laughs> literally right next. I was sitting in the row in front of him. His right knee was directly in my back, six foot eight, six seven, or whatever <laughs> it is, in one of the three seaters, you know, three seater, three seater on either side. I don't even think they had a first class. And his left leg was my arm thing now, nice. you know, because he was like right here, and I'm like, what the hell? Are we trying to win a football game? Like <laughs> this guy is yeah. protecting the number one over okay. pick. Is this what we're doing? Here? I've always thought that was wild, man. Like, it, but then I also think like we are. Yes, we are absolutely pampered. Yes, that's a, a first world problem because I saw the picture of the Packers playing from the first from the first flight ever where they flew. I think it was from Chicago to New York for a game against the Giants. And the Packers were all stuffed into that one tiny little plane, and I was like, oh yeah, they, they did do that back in the day. But in today's world, on a tens of billions of dollar business i did think it was wild to see a starting offensive tackle six foot seven jammed into a seat knowing that he's going to need all those muscles that are just being tightened up for the next four hours the next day like it is wild and then as sports science developed they're like all right we're going to stretch now and it was like and then we're going to jam you into this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even though there's certainly a plane that's larger than this that it has been available for the colts in the past but not right now it's not it's like Tell me, uh, tell me if you had this thought, because I had this thought, and I'm very curious. I've never asked anybody else this, but I'm curious if I'm the only one that had this. You know when the Patriots got their own plane the first time? Yep, two of them. I thought when they got their own plane, I had in my head that there was vision. I had, like, they had beds. They had, like, massage tables. They had, like, IVs. They, I had it set up like they had a custom plane with everything in it. And then I found out it was, it was just a Delta plane painted with their logo. No, everybody had first class had to. Everybody got big. Well, yeah, I mean, like there were there were still lay down seats and everything, but like I thought it was set up. I don't know why I thought this, but I thought like when a team gets a custom plane, like have you seen some of the NBA planes? Yes, they do have like all the tables and everything, which we never had any of that. But I thought like, well, maybe they have like Norma Tech set up. Maybe they have all that type of stuff, like a full blown like recovery lounge. So after the game, that's what I thought in my head. 
Yeah, and like Air Force One, Bill's got an office. Yep, of course. Exactly. Yeah, a team yes. meeting room if we need. Yeah. Projector comes down. Mm-hmm. Made flight. That's right. what I thought. Yeah, me too. I think actually, it's just a bum ass plane. Is no, that- no, it's not just. No, a it's bum-ass. a nice plane. It's a nice plane, but it's. I'm just saying, like I thought. That's in my head what I thought, and I. It wasn't that. Yeah, we all have too many expectations. I think for the NFL. Well, I mean, since being an yeah, all this, all this. I'm looking at the inside right now. All the seats are first class. Okay. okay, that's good. Yeah. That's NBA. Yep. That's what the NBA has oh, done. Yeah. I mean, but other than that, it looks like a, it's it's. If you're looking at the plane. inside, can we see it? Can yeah, I just said it. Or is it not? Well, I think oh, the NBA right. only takes like 25 people though on their flight. No, so, I saw what's yeah. his face, Cross, Jerry Cross, Jerry Cross yeah. dancing down the middle. Oh, it's yeah. not just the players. Remember, it's also the entire crew. They still got a three wide, so you got to have somebody sitting in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, that's it's it's a it's a Seattle had plane. a plane, but they got rid of it. Seattle used to have a plane. I heard it was really nice. Oh, they sent it out like they did Pete Carroll. <laughs> I, I don't know how many years Sounds ago, like but yeah, just stupid plane, stupid Pete, get out of here. Boeing, yeah, uh, yeah it was just Jimmy Graham. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa! What are you saying about Boeing? Yeah. I didn't say anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, you mentioned it. Seattle. What's, What's going on Seattle? over there? Yeah, I would shit my pants. So. We had a little turbulence. I'm like, well, I'm dying. Whoa. Sweet. I'm dead. If a part of the wall just went missing. I'd have a heart attack and die. <laughs> I'd never fly again. I'd die in my seat. Oh, my God. No question. That's just been, I guess, a couple, a few times. Oh, yeah. There's that one and on then fire. You, and then you land, and it's like, listen, I know that you'll think about this for the rest of your life and never be able to sleep again. We can give you a $700 voucher for your next yo travel experience. And also, the peanuts that we weren't able to serve, because if we served them, they would have got sucked out in right. the atmosphere. Here they Here are. Here you go. On the way out. Thank you so much <laughs> for coming. That would be wild. After you got over the initial shock, it would be pretty wild and fascinating just to fly with half the wall open. So, you know... When you're at one of those like high things and there's like a door, some people have like the urge to go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like open the door and mm-hmm. right. walk out. Once you realize that you're not immediately dead, whenever once again side of the plane is missing at whatever thirty thousand feet, like the two minutes after the full panic, oh my god, I'm a dead person. You're still alive. It would be interesting to be like, what's going on out there? Yeah. What is yeah. it? Right how, next to it. How does this work? That's a long right. time to panic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it's not like a, oh, oh the heck, ah, we're oh, good. thank we're God good. I'm It's like, oh, shit. Oh, we got to find a l- runway. <laughs> uh-huh. We got to put the landing gear down. We, gotta, we can't just drop out because everybody's, you know, we got to do this whole How thing. How cold it would so be. So cold. Do we have any blank? Can you, can you walk past the hole in the wall, give me a blanket? I mean, what am I supposed yeah, to do? They did. Uh, they did. I did, uh, uh, I did a USO out. tour. I did a USO tour over in Afghanistan, and they did, we did the helicopter with the doors wide open, flying around through the mountains and everything. That, that was a... That was a wild and badass experience. Did you have a 50 cal? Were you the one? Yeah. You the guy next to me did. Oh. You shoot Whoa. anybody? With how big you are, I assume they, yeah. they were not pumped that you were in their helicopter or they were excited you were in there? Um, well, I mean, I, I, I hope they were excited. That was literally the whole reason we were there. Yeah, when they walked up. Stupid J.J. Watts here. <laughs> how come we couldn't get a <laughs> smaller? How come we no. It was awesome. We had uh, Steve Smith, Von Billion. Steve Smith was racing. Uh, army guy, he was racing soldiers down the tarmac. He was like, because the soldier was like, I, I can beat you in a 40. And he's like, all right, right now. And on the middle of the tarmac, like just C-30s lined up all down the tarmac. And they just lined up and ran 40-yard dashes down the Who so won? Sweet. Who won? See, and he talked a lot of shit. It was awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's what they're looking <laughs> for. Awesome. The US, uh, I went on a USO tour as well to uh, Japan. And Japan is just the complete opposite of America, pretty much. Food, language view ev- everything they're so nice so so incredible quiet nice clean how you doing mm-hmm. just opposite world or whatever and their language is nothing like ours i mean i, don't, I assume afghanistan similar but <laughs> japan their language is, so whenever we were there it was just like uh, they were happy a piece of america was there almost they were just like very thankful those that uso crew does great things i think i, yes, I enjoy it a lot the USO does a phenomenal job. It was a really, really cool experience. Something I will remember for the rest of my life. It was we played flag football with all the soldiers, and it was uh, we also got to just hang around, and walk, meet them, and then obviously you go to the hospital and you meet some of the guys and the gals who have been injured, and just truly a life changing experience. It was unbelievable and forever thankful for every single person who puts their body on the line. Hell yeah! Thank, Thank you, man. troops. Love you. you. Uh, Ty has a question for you, not about the military. Yeah, JJ, you mentioned Anthony Weaver. Uh, He's been kind of floated as a potential new D.C. for the Packers after they fired Joe Barry today. I don't know how many times in your career you had a D.C. get let go of, you know, right after the year, but... 
people always talk about what the Packers say. They have eight first-round picks on their defense. Like They should be much better than they are, but for whatever reason, year after year, they can't stop the run, and they're kind of just middle of the road towards you know one of the, the worst defenses in the NFL. How likely is it that like a new DC comes in and like whether it's a change in scheme or or whatever it is like a new guy and a new voice can actually get all that talent to buy in and we'll see them be like one of the better defenses in the NFL next year. Yeah, I think it's a combination of both things that you just said. I do think that the voice and the leadership does matter, but I also think defense in the NFL is very schematic and does need um, somebody who really knows what they're talking about, knew, knew, knows how to make adjustments against certain schemes, who knows how to do things against, who's seen a lot, who's been around. Um, so it's that combination of the two. Sometimes we talked about it with D'Amico Ryans as a head coach and why I think he's so successful as a head coach. He has the schematic knowledge and he knows everything and has the expertise, but he also at the same time can put that into his players and get them that knowledge and deliver it to them and motivate them to play even better than they might otherwise. So it's a, sometimes it's just a matter of those two things. I mean, from all accounts that I've heard, Joe Barry's a phenomenally nice guy. Um, for me, Anthony Weaver, obviously having been with him down in Houston, I love the guy, and I hope he gets a shot as a DC or head coach, and I hope you all have a fantastic day. Ah. You're still. we got time. Still ESPN. Good. 10 seconds. Just 10 hang seconds. out for a couple more seconds. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Well, I hope yeah, you're fine. having a nice day. JJ, you want to? No, we don't want to talk about that. No, nah, I'm good. See you guys tomorrow. Nailed it, JJ. You did really nice die. job. Your salute was yeah, way late. Plus, what was that late? The music shit. is sometimes like 20 seconds, sometimes five seconds. I never know. Well, it depends on whether or not you're saying something worth a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I was getting played off the screen. They were like, dude, nobody cares about these. No, things. you were saying What's good stuff. So we delayed, delayed, delayed oh, as much oh, as possible. Okay. It, now, whenever okay. you hear that thing, middle of your answer, and there's 30 to 35 seconds left, then it's like, uh, Okay, yeah. here we, we go. You know, that just, there's something to remember. I assume CBS is very similar. Oh, it's super similar to this show. It's almost identical. Yeah. No. <laughs> what will you guys be talking about? How many hours are you out there for? Um, I honestly don't know this weekend with the championship, but I do know for the Super Bowl we have a four-hour pregame show. Um, so that is a significant amount of time uh, to speak to a whole lot of people. So About one uh, game? I'm looking. Yeah, about two teams. Like, you don't even have the whole slate. It's uh, The NFL Network. Do post game? Uh, what's that? We do post game after, yeah. Will you do post-game after Super Bowl two on the field? Yeah, we do pre-game. Uh, we do the little halftime, obviously, leading into Usher. And then we do post-game also. Usher, baby. Mm. What do you think he's going to do? You remind me of a girl. Who's he bringing? What's that? I mean, I, how, I, many, I, how many I, hip I, thrusts out of Usher? So, so many. many. Usher's going to be so just many. spinning it all oh, over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, AJ just brought it up, too. He's probably bringing Bieber because Biebs and Usher are boys. Yeah. So you assume yeah. them two are going to do Taylor something Taylor probably crazy. comes out of the suite. No, nah, Taylor ain't working if they're in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Just and I actually, I, from what I've been told, I think the internet said, she's got a show in somewhere. Yeah. Super Bowl weekend. Hey, bad news for that we show. We are getting rescheduled. <laughs> yeah. You guys are going on Wednesday. Ooh, that th that'd that'd thing's bad, not happening that'd Sunday. That'd be a bad, uh, ooh, I don't think so. She's picking Travi over her fans. Love. She's yeah. picking a Super Bowl for the family. Yeah. yeah. Her fans should Have get Have you that. seen her fans' response? Her fans love it. Mm. Her fans are all okay. about it. Sure. They just want to see her happy. Amen. She is, God damn it. Yes, we do. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Who's not happy? Well, what? Tone, Tone made a little comment. Who's not happy? So she has a, uh, she has a show in Tokyo, which is 14-hour, 15-hour Oh, she can make it back. She'll be back in plenty of time. Yeah, sure. yeah what's the time? Sure, change? the fans that bought tickets to that and we'll have to reschedule and stuff will be fine. Selling out the Tokyo Dome's awesome. What is the time difference? <laughs> Four nights in a row. Sixteen hours, I think. Six Good days. lord. I think it's sixteen forward. Wow. Yeah. So, so by the time she finishes, it's probably still Saturday in the states. Uh, yeah, because they're they're New Year's ahead of us. Bingo. So she could probably be back. But then she's in Australia the next week. Melbourne. Yeah, but Tokyo. It's How many people does the Melbourne Cricket Ground hold? That sounds like it hold a significant. I think it's one hundred fifteen thousand. From if if my shut up. You know, yeah, the grand final for the AFL. I believe it's in the same exact place and is over one hundred thousand. And that's just in the stands, let alone if they fill the field, which is big. The field's huge. <laughs> Two nights in a row, back to back. Yeah, how you doing? My name's Taylor Swift. These stadiums yeah. you guys are playing in, cute. 53 guys on each mm -hmm. team, plus coaches, and a full media yeah. push to sell this place. So wait, give me a guitar, give me a fucking microphone. Mm -hmm. I'll sell this one. Yeah, but I don't know why we're showing her on TV. No. I don't know. It's not like, oh, yeah, no idea why we're showing her. Yeah. Well, that, was a, that was a pretty good. Far in the, 
world. Pretty good AQ Shipley impression, JJ. Why? Where he was saying, "Why are we showing Taylor Swift?" <laughs> <Yep. laughs> oh, is AQ good. pissed? Is AQ oh, one yeah. of these tough guys? Oh, he he why it. are we showing Taylor Swift? I want to see the football. <laughs> yeah, oh wait, yeah. there's Jay Z. Yeah, Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I wasn't saying that either. He, he, no, he, he, he equally hates all of it. Yep, equally hate all of it. Yeah, he's. You hate any celebrity being shown at the game? Yeah, I just want to watch a game. Let's just show the fans. Did you? Let me ask you a very specific question. She's one. Let me ask you one very specific question. Okay. Did you enjoy your paychecks from the National Football League? Taylor Swift pays it? Watch your mind. It would be a lot smaller if they never showed a celebrity in the history of the game. Paychecks would be a whole lot smaller. Oh! I don't don't agree with that one bit. And you knew. You don't think (laughs) that the fans are the reason we have a game? The The fans. fans. Thank you, JJ. Thank you for saying what you're saying to AQ. It's about time. Put them on a split. Put them on a split, JJ and AQ. The fans are the whole reason we have a game. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. If she was a real fan, would she have a Tokyo concert the day before the Super Bowl? They scheduled this. A year and a half we're ago. dating when this was it's scheduled. No, 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 but what he's argue. saying is, she knows when the Super Bowl is every weekend. If she was actual football fan, she she's bingo. just getting into what are we she talking about? Show on the Super Bowl? Is there a show on the what? Super Bowl day? There's no, not a no, show on the Super Bowl. I mean, this is absurd. Put those two marks on a split together. You <laughs> Yo, you're talking about Tony yeah. AQ? Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Those are the two. That, uh, these guys. Yeah, we're, we're the tough guys. We don't want to see <laughs> not, Taylor Swift yeah. on our screen. I never screen. said it. Yeah, get out of here. Yeah, get you, you love you your fame, JJ. Good job, man. You're doing great. You love your fame. You love all this stuff. It's, I bet you love it. Let me not, I don't hate it. Not, I don't hate it. It is a pretty sweet gig. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Let's yeah. not forget what JJ's take was when we first started this thing, too. Okay, I see you've come around now, but... You well, know there was a lot of people. Well, early on, well, it was me. a little no. much. JJ not wasn't not believing that it was real love. He thought it was all for publicity. He wasn't the only one. There was a lot of people that thought that. I don't think JJ exactly said that, but I think Tony's putting words potentially into his thoughts. <laughs> wow. But I think I, no, this doesn't even have anything to do with that if that was or wasn't the case. This is just being shown on the screen. Like, it is. <sighs> These people don't understand sports entertainment. No, <laughs> they, don't. Yeah, it's just they, like, don't. they don't. They don't. To be honest, these yeah. people don't. Yeah, 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 you're right. yeah. sports yeah. entertainment is so much more complicated. You guys don't get it. You guys yeah. just don't get it. I would like to let all the Swifties know, and uh, we're, his name is AQ Shipley. Uh, lives in Arizona. A, yeah, I think he's like a. Uh, uh, he has an honorary Marine degree or yep. something. Yeah, uh, 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 Green Beret. Green Beret. Yep. He graduated. He lives he's in Arizona and he hangs out in a big, basement. Big so if you ever want to send your hate <laughs> mail to the basement <laughs> in Arizona, yeah. Yeah. he rolls yeah. around with those yeah. guys in the basement. Vote was yeah. per- personal chef to Joseph Biden uh, <laughs> d- during his time as <laughs> vice president. Yeah, we don't know. Wears uh, gigantic <laughs> shoes. <laughs> yep. races. Very yep. comfortable yeah. shoes. Yeah, he is That's a he is a hundred miler runner. Um, no, but for real though, I'm happy that that beginning part where there was a lot of anxi- angst. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. we've gotten past it now, mm-hmm. and I think the way old Taylor and Trav have handled it has been good. And I said this since the beginning because I'm a human. I think that knows Travis a little bit. Yeah, okay? I've got it. Ch- he actually, I think, on our program stated that she was probably going to be at the game that upcoming weekend, which obviously led to a lot of uh, buzz. And we're thankful that Travis. You know, as a friend of the program, same with Jason, it's like they feel like it's perfect situation. Yes. Travis, at the stage of life that he's at with how old he is, people forget because how cool Travis looks. He's been around a long time. He's made over $100 million in the NFL. Yeah, for sure. Like, he's been around a long time. She's obviously at a stage now where she's been, you know, through a lot in life. It's like almost a perfect situation, which is kind of my thoughts from the very beginning. But, boy, there's a lot of people that didn't want it to be real. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that didn't want to see them Mm -hmm. happy, Mm -hmm. didn't want to see them in love. Bullshit. And I think there's a good depiction of it with this bald-headed man right Mm -hmm. here, obviously. I I love love. But now – no, you don't. Do you? No, you don't. 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 I love love and I love football. Just don't want to see it with your football. I just want to watch my football and see the fans cheer. So you don't want – She's a fan. I'm so confused. You don't think any celebrity ever should be shown? I, I care less if a celebrity shown. Blueface, you seen that clip? Could care less. Yeah, Blueface killer. What about Eminem? If he was out there singing as part of the pregame festivities, I would love it. How about whenever he's shown on Jumbo Could Trump? care less seeing him jump up in a thing and go like this. Like, that you, did nothing for my Mary experience. Do yeah, you, you like when they show Mary somebody's Ando. mom like after they score a touchdown? Like, it's like when Hop goes over and gives his mom the football. After yeah, I think that's cool. Touchdown. I think that's cool. What about that's so, mom? But, that's, but why, that's mom. why can't they show? I don't think, I don't think you're comparing apples to apples here. Like it, Not one bit. Trans- <laughs> 
<laughs> We're comparing so D your wife, D like Hop's mom, a celebrity. Can't show a wife. Well, Taylor's not a wife yet, which wife. Tony Romo has said numerous times. Yep. Well, there's Taylor's brother-in-law, <laughs> yep. Taylor's mother-in-law. Tony Romo's just put them already being married. Maybe he knows something that we don't Maybe know. Maybe he married them. He could have. <laughs> there's a chance Romo was the ordained oh, minister at awesome. their wedding. Anyways, Tay loves Jason. That's what is the most recent Sorry, news. Bingo. That's big news. And it's Taylor Swift. And if Jason, bingo. Right. Congrats to them. Yeah. You know. Love you, Taylor. Yeah. Congrats to football getting exposed to a demographic. Don't clap, AQ. Don't <laughs> clap. I'm, I'm round of applause in it. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay. JJ. Great work this week. I don't know if we started any wars, uh, but I think you went to bat for the right things. Fans are the reason why we have jobs. Always will be. And we're appreciative of them. The ratings yeah, are up and to I the right. That. No matter what. Stats can some be real, some be fake. And Burnley's in second to last place. We need to get them up a couple spots. Oh, right? Yes. Yes, we uh yes, yes we do. Gump, do we have any Thanks. chance in hell to move up this ladder uh for Burnley? Are you guys getting Carlos Forbes on loan or not, JJ? <laughs> I can't. Uh, I can't discuss Ooh. our our business moves publicly. Did you see um, Nottingham we Forest? We did sign Fofana. We did sign Fofana on loan. Nice. Um, we, uh, we did Nottingham, have Nottingham Forest we got Gio Reyna. Yeah, JJ. why didn't you go get Gio Reyna? Are we Gio making Reyna? any moves like that? Yeah, there's an American that was we, available named Gio, and you said, "I don't want him." Sweet. Was that dog. you or Tyler's call? Sheriff of Nottingham. We do have Man City coming up in our next match on a week from today. Oh, and Erling no. Holland is getting healthy at exactly the wrong time. Oh, so boy. that's uh but I we're we've got some time to prepare and we're looking forward to the opportunity. Well Fafana's ready. Yeah, Fafana's yeah. at If you do get Carlos Forbes, I like your chances. You guys Gumpy advisor yeah. for Burnley. Carlos Forbes, very good young player. They have to play Man City, Gump. They are so Yeah, fun. they don't need to beat Man City though. There's a lot of other games left. How many games do we have left? Thank you. A lot. I'm going over there for a month. In, uh, I'm going over there for a month, so I'm going to see a bunch of them. Wow. That's when things will heat up, okay. I'm sure. Who, yeah. Do we have a good run during that month? So whenever we see you go to England, we're like, all right, now, now Burnley. Time. Let's bet on Undefeated. Now, now Burnley has a chance? <laughs> That's hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. What's your record boots on the ground, JJ? Um... Well, because I, I, I started last year, so I got two wins last year, but it was a championship. Um, obviously, we won the league last year. Doesn't count. Um, no, that counts. That counts. That count. Boots on. Yeah, so two and zero there, the and then we we lost to Man City in the first match. Two one. We were winning, and then we lost to Villa. Two and two. Um, so <laughs> two and two, <laughs> and then. You kind of have to beat Fulham here coming up, JJ. You got to win that Fulham match. Saturday, February. I agree. I agree. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. You guys tied the other one times. you were at. And then obviously we got Liverpool. So yeah. you're two, two, and one boots on the ground. Still 500. There's a chance to get a winning record, especially over a month. You go from Fulham to Liverpool. Yikes. Tough. To Arsenal. Dude. To Crystal Arsenal. Palace. Yeah, you can get Palace. What else we got? Yeah, we got a. That's February. That's just it's the February. Premier League. It's all hard. It's you can get Bournemouth. West Ham's a tough I, squad. I start. I start right there with West Ham. I start with West Ham. Oh, there. okay. You, you get, you get uh, Brentford's got Tony back. They're kind of buzzing right now. He'll, he'll be hurt by then. Are you swinging by? We hope not. Are you swinging over to Ireland for St. Patrick's Day there? If you're going to be over in England in March. Um, I hadn't. I hadn't thought about that. But that is not a bad idea. But like, I, I've I've been over there during that time before, and it's it's obviously crazy. I, I prefer it a little quieter. Do they like you over there when you were in Ireland? I love Ireland. I've been a bunch of times. Went to Six Nations rugby match um, against France. The Irish, the Irish rugby team has been at my house in Houston drinking beers. Uh, oh, it's your celebrity. It's, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, we have we have a good it's time. Life, in Ireland. Huh? Love it. Wine, yeah. yeah, get to do this. Certified Guinness go. pour. The Irish hated me, pal, buddy. I've never seen a Why? hate somebody so quickly, huh? Why? Wow. Why? You're wearing the Irish green shirt. You, you drink beer, I'm sure. Why? Why would they not like you? My name's Patrick McAfee. Uh, I thought it was going to be a big parade everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I I, it was not. Stupid Yank everywhere. Okay, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. I'm not the only one, too. Handsome Evan Fox got similar treatment. Yeah, JJ, they kicked my whole family out of a bar out there. Yeah. It was uh, well, interesting. Wait, was what? Yeah, yeah, we, why? Respect yeah, it. We, we respect it. Yeah, the dad's booze bag for sure. But yeah. like ordered 80 beers <laughs> when he walked in. <laughs> we respect it. We respect it. That's how it was. Right. But did not did not expect you do? it. Respect it, but did not expect it, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Interesting. But you got kicked out? Me, no. Foxy's whole family did. Yeah. For me, yeah. they just the threatened Foxy to fight. Family. But why what why don't they like you? Did you what 
They just automatically, as soon as you stepped in the country, they were like, not a fan. Yeah, we all see how I've dressed throughout my life. Like, they know I'm American as soon as I get dropped in anywhere, pretty much. And it was hard to get served a drink. At a, if there was more mm. people at a pub than just me, it was hard to get a drink. Wow. There was a lot of, like, literally going over my head to order. I'm like, gee, what the fuck? Did I, what I'm trying to, I'm trying to get hammered drunk with you guys. Yeah. And it was... Uh, Where's your number one place to vacation? Phoenix, Arizona. Love it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely love it. Come on down, baby. Right after the season. Vegas is close. Just pop right down. There's also an island in the Caribbean that AJ's been trying to... Yeah, uh, quite a bit. Tell me that, that one. one. You remember that, AJ? Yeah. Yeah. So AJ was talking right. about... It's, I, it's I, I don't think I've ever been to an time. island. Probably a good time for me to get out of here. Yeah. All but right. That's, that's a Tuesday conversation. This is when... <laughs> no. All right. Don't be a wuss. What was happening over there, JJ? What was happening? Owner of Burnham, AJ. JJ Watt. Thank you, JJ. All right, let's get to a break. Ryan Smith, owner of the Utah Jazz, a man who uh, owns the Smith Entertainment Group, which obviously has plenty of things under its umbrella, has openly campaigned to the NHL to get an expansion team in Salt Lake City. This is obviously something that the NHL has done very well as of recent history. Expansion teams, getting them good, building the league, building eyeballs. We don't know when the next expansion is expected to come. We talked to Gary Bettman, commissioner of the NHL early in the year, about expansion, and he basically just said, you know, we're always thinking about it, trying to see who the right partners are. Ryan Smith, owner of the Jazz, said, we're the right partner, and put him public, pretty much. The NHL has answered. He will join us on the other side. His Jazz team, by the way. Going. Playing really good basketball right yeah. now. So, I can't wait for that. Anytime a billionaire stops by, mm -hmm. normally good conversations take place. We'll have that plus in the trenches. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Take five. Bye. Bye. I had no idea what to expect whenever I came out here to Utah. Yeah, Josh, 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 I can't make it. Steve Smith Sr. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Pac-12 champion, head coach of the Utah Buttes football team. Pulling in on a Harley Davidson Sportster, I do believe. Coach Kyle winning. Is pounding up that I ain't even wished for No leftover for y'all I'm locking the fridge door At the crib cutting hits I read through the catalog Came to conclusion No one's touching this Just finished the main voyage I've been off the main flat I said I'm shot to kill them off Whatever the take down Seen the boats I'm at home I'm selfish with the goals I Oh, <laughs> I mean, you gotta do it. I mean, I you. It is 34 degrees out here <laughs> in the back to back Pac 12 champions. Mighty Utah student section has been here in abundance. They've been loud in today's a day where they showcase to the world that it's not just Mormons and soaking in Utah. No, no. <laughs> It's great football and an incredible fan base. They've been so kind, I appreciate the hell out of you all. <laughs> Have you ever thought something negative about a kicker before in your entire life? Yes! All right, relax, dude. <laughs> okay. Boston yeah. Connor was drinking with Dwayne Wade last night. $225,000. Let's remember this day forever, Cameron. That 29 out of the last 30 home games that happens right here at the University.
to Utah. The Utah Utes win. Cam Rising said yesterday, we don't lose at home. And today, they ain't losing. This place is going to be soaking in celebration this evening. You guys were absolutely Jack, dude. Wow. What's the most beer you did in one night you think of one of those shows? Well, I never forget when we went to Japan one time. Uh, Dudley, Stacy Keebler. I mean, there were so many people out there. We, I think we went through 103 or 108. Now, between just for myself, you know, I'd always make sure to have about a 12 or 18 pack there. <laughs> and, you know, here's the thing when some people say, oh, shit, man, you got too much of that beer on, you don't even know how to drink beer. It's like, dude, fuck you. <laughs> you don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to entertain 20,000 people in an arena. If I just go out there and sip it real properly, how fucking exciting is that? <laughs> So when you're out there on an empty belly and you're shotgunning beers and all that shit's going in, the, the half that was going in was for me. The half that was going on was for them. Nice. But I'm telling you, Pat, when you when you shotgun a bunch of beers like that and you're drinking about half of each beer, you got a pretty damn good buzz when you come out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a sacrifice I was willing to make every single night. I would assume you were pretty fucked up, yeah. When did and, you start uh, you self cheersing? When did you start self cheersing? Was that something you did in college? You're like, hey, hey, Steve, good for me, man. <laughs> when did that start? No, you know what? Uh, you know, I got to give credit to Sandman for starting that, but he was bashing him off his head, and, and I don't remember. And it wasn't because Sandman was doing it, so I don't want to say I copied him, but he was the first. So, and then my style was, because people always get us confused. They'll say, yeah, man, you used to bang them on your head. No, motherfucker, no. I was the guy that clacked them together. <laughs> it was just something we came up with. I don't know how the, the beers got introduced to the ring, but it became a thing and we ran with it. Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. <laughs> the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport, 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 sport! Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Wild Trenches Wednesday, January 24th, 2024. Hour three of the program starts now. Football! This is what we normally talk about. That man's champion in college and at the professional level of football. That's A.J. Hawk. Howdy, baby, A.J. Howdy, A.J. You look amazing today, obviously. Is that a turtleneck, a mock turtleneck, or a hoodie? What do you got going on? Uh, it's like a hybrid hoodie slash thing that has a high neck, yeah. And I think we've tried to talk about this before, but obviously in normal A.J. Hawk fashion, you get very defensive. Does that thing have a tight uh, a tight circle like a Kenny from South Park type hoodie? Yeah, a little bit. You, you work out in that thing? You get after it? You get jocked in that thing? Yeah, I will. I'll, I'll wear this for any occasion, really. What time is the workout every single day in the morning? 
Well, it just depends. Anytime between maybe 5.15 and 6.15. Anytime between 5.15 and 5.17 yep. is uh, anytime. It could be in there, obviously. AJ, an absolute machine, a monster. The Toxic Table at Boston Connor and Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys Tone Diggs, a 12-year NFL vet, hater of most things. Yep. Mm-hmm. Host of In the Trenches, ladies and gentlemen, A.Q. Shipley. Hey, hey, A.Q. Nine-year NFL vet, host of the Man to Man podcast and everything DB. Good D. Bad D, Darius J. Butler. And joining us now is a man who plays basketball, I think, at like 6 a.m. or 5.30 a.m. every day. Damn. Now, I don't know how many billionaires are doing that. I don't know how many team owners are doing that. But once we had a chance to meet him late October, whenever we traveled out to Utah, we realized quickly, this guy's a Mm go-getter. This guy seemingly does everything right. And now he has put it out into the universe publicly from his business that he is looking for an expansion NHL team to come to the state in which he loves, which is Utah. One of the most successful Mormons in the history of the religion, ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Smith. Yeah, Ryan! What's what's up, fellas? Hey, you look so cool right now. I just want to let you know that you look so cool right now with the visor mm-hmm. and the color popped All under right. the sweater. Are we golfing? Did we just get done golfing? What's happening? No, I played last week and I haven't taken it off. I'm like going full Keith Mitchell. I reserve the right to switch it up, just like you're wearing sleeves right now. Thank we you. reserve the right to switch it up. It's not backwards hat. I, at my age, I can do it. Yeah, you're allowed to do whatever the hell you want, especially with the resume that you have. And I appreciate you allowing me to maybe wear sleeves every once in a while if I'd like to maybe get into shape where I can finally wear shirts that don't make me look like a fat ass. With that being said, last <laughs> week at the Amex uh, golf tourney that the Alabama kid won, oh, yeah. Wednesday, pro How good was that, by uh, the way? Phen- he's the next one. There's This is this guy, Ryan Smith, owner of the Jazz. Obviously, self-made billionaire. And look at the stroke. This is on hole 17. Ooh, Alcatraz? Alcatraz. Yeah. What happened? What? Oh, no. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Wow. Hey, we talked to you before you went out there, and we knew you looked really cool. I mean, you looked incredibly I mean, cool. Yeah. We didn't know what the game was going to look like because you said you might get a little tight with the crowd. Seems like you balled. How'd you? Hey. Congrats to you, Ryan. Yeah. That's massive. Yeah, that's all That's all that practice that I had out behind the, the Thunderdome with the boys, just a little further distance. But if you can do it there, you can do it out there at Alcatraz. But it was good. It was good. I mean, it's very different when you're under the ropes. I was, I was a lot better from 150 than I was around the greens. But um, that was an amazing experience. It's, it's like one of the only sports that you can be in the ropes with the pros come game time. Like, it's an insane experience. Did you get better or worse, you think, at the golf that day? I think it, I think it was a prep for next week. I'm teeing up at the AT&T with Tony Finau as a partner next week. Um, Pebble Beach. Um, it's going to be tight. Like, all the nerves, full display, like, we're going to see. No, everybody's going to think you suck anyways. Remember, mm-hmm. that, that, that you, Tony Finau is <laughs> supposed to be good. Tony mm-hmm. Finau is supposed to be good. Yeah, right? You're not supposed to be good. Remember, wow, with all the uh, all the nerves probably and the anxiety mm-hmm. that come along. Like, everybody's not expecting you to be great. So when you put one to two inches, look at this guy. Whoa. That, that's the clip that makes it out there. You're in a great spot, I think, Ryan. Not a bad spot. How does that not go in, though? How does that not go in? Well... There might be one little thing missing from your universe. Mm-hmm. And uh, obviously, <laughs> you are living the dream of a lot of humans in the United States of America. Uh, I believe you dropped out of high school, ended up creating a business. We're going to sell that thing a few times, become a multi-billionaire, buy the hometown favorite Utah jazz team, run that into a wagon yeah. right now, Ryan. And then now, as of this morning, you kind of project into the world that you think you're ready for another team. You basically asked the NHL to do another round of expansion and bring a team to Utah. And you and I chatted about this this particular evening where Gumps looks incredibly cool. I'm on a bunch of uh, vitamins that, you know, tough to find in Utah, but had a great night. Yep. Obviously had a great night there. But we even chatted about hockey there and your love of the sport and how you think it would do in Utah. Now it seems like you're kind of trying to make it happen. What led you to make this statement publicly towards the NHL and how close do you think you actually are? Yeah, so first of all, I think on our side, we're all in. I mean, I think that's the most important thing is that we get lined up. Um, I think we've gotten and established a pretty good relationship with Gary Batman and Bill and the crew over there for a couple of years now. And I think that, that that's important as well. And, you know, if you look at the momentum of Utah, we've got to put something in front of them that's pretty tough for them to turn down. And I think we've done that. We've got the youngest demographic in the country, the fastest growing state. We just were, we're in the process of the Olympics, which 
is massive for 34 in hockey. Um, hockey is one of the only winter sports that isn't training there. We've got a top five tech ecosystem. Um, and, and really, we've sold out 251 straight jazz games. Um, it's going to be successful. And I think if you take a step back and you look at that momentum with a chance to build an incredible new arena somewhere that's hockey specific, um, it's, it's pretty compelling for, from our standpoint. And our group, our ownership group is completely lined up, ready to go. Okay, so it feels like whenever you say ready to go, people would say, well, it would be a transition process. I think in your statement, you even said, we'd be ready to do this next year if we had to. Logistically, it's set up. You can get the logos. You can get the graphics. You can get the marketing. And with the way the NHL has handled expansion over the past, your team would be good quick as well. That's kind of how the NHL expansion process goes. How serious are you about we could do this next year? And do you think that's a reality? Yeah, over the last couple of years, we've been holding NHL games. We've, we've done the, the Frozen Fury in the Delta Center. It fits. It works. Um, it's not as many seats as we would like because it's not configured the right way. But we could probably get 14,000 plus in there and get going on a launch. So our goal is our organization is we want to be ready to go. We know it's going to be successful. Utah is excited about it, as you've seen the reaction. And so we're, we're leaning all the way in. How come today did you choose to do the public, you know what I mean? Because two years you've been working this, seemingly with Gary Bettman, trying to figure out if it's right. Now taking it public is applying a little bit more pressure. Why did you think now is the right time to do it? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of people who express interest or, hey, it'd be nice or, like, we'd be open to it. I think as we sat down recently with our group at SCG, we, we basically decided if we're gonna if we're gonna go in, we got we got to go all the way in, and like we're gonna have to come out and say that we're ready, and and be ready for everything that that entails. Because unless we show the NHL that that's where we're at, and have those discussions with them, and and get them in a spot where they've got to look at this and say, holy cow, like this is the youngest one of the youngest ownership groups in sports. Um, tech focus. They wear cool visors. With this market. They wear cool visors. <laughs> what? I mean, this is, yeah. So, so I think, I think yeah. that sure. is, if you put all that together, like it's a pretty compelling case. And so it's out there. Um, we're ready. And I think that's the next step, which we hadn't done, honestly, in the past. In the past, it's been, you know, Pat, you and I talking, or our group talking, saying, hey, we'd love to have it there and be working. It is on the tape. It is on the ticker. Yeah. And, that's normally when things happen, you know, whenever that gets to that point. Today in hockey, obviously, there's a lot happening. Mm -hmm. But if an expansion team was to come to Utah, boy, that'd be Ooh. a beautiful. We would love to travel out there for a couple games. Go ahead, AJ. Do you have any idea, uh, any, any other cities around the country that may be vying for uh, an expansion team as well? And does that come into play when the NHL is looking at where to go maybe? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll leave all the expansion up to up to Gary because, you know, he's got to run that process or whatever that looks like with their group. But, um, you know, I've seen, just like you've all seen, um, multiple cities saying, hey, we'd love to do it. I think we've been in that spot, and now it was, you know, this, is, I think, is a little different where we're saying, hey, like, we're ready, and we can, we can do it now. We don't, we don't need to go build a, an arena to land a team right now. And, you know, it's not by accident that we've been putting these games in. Um, but I think with the Olympics and everything else that's coming, um, you know, to be one of the only winter sports that's not there um, as a home for training in the U.S., um, it's, pretty, it's pretty compelling if you add that with the growth and everything else that's going on. Your sense of pride of Utah is obviously very real. And I think... You've chatted to me about, you know, the connection of Utah and bringing Utah together because there's, uh, you know, the Soakers. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Is how, hey, I'm just telling you how, what Utah people told us about BYU. Hey, we had 18,000 18, last night at the Marriott Center of BYU on ESPN for BYU-Houston. It was electric. It was a great game. You should have seen what they did after. Yeah, after. Did you guys win? Oh, did BYU geez. win? I just teed that up for you guys. Yeah, because we're just you all visors. Yeah, we're talking about the bed. We're talking about the bed. Just rocking, big time win. You know, eighteen thousand amount of energy that's probably in that soaking atmosphere. Oh my! 
my God. Look the out. amount of earthquakes going off. They probably there had to get go. the yeah, Richter, Richter scale, scale. Yeah. Yeah. out of that old place. <laughs> yeah, we saw it. It was actually on the news. Yeah. Oh, my. That makes sense uh -huh. now. Mm -hmm. So there yep. was not an earthquake no. in Utah last no. night. But there was a celebration man, of man, earthquake. Yeah, man, yep. man. yeah, man. No, man. we didn't win. There was no celebration, but we. Uh, oh, <laughs> sad <laughs> soaking. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Sometimes better. <laughs> uh, it, anyways, there does seem to be, you know, Utah, BYU, two different kind of fashions in Utah. But you uh, have been. Like, one of your main messages to us immediately was about how, hey, Utah is an incredible state, great state. We need to bring it together, and everybody loves sports. And with the thought of bringing another team to Utah in the way you sell Utah, are you like future governor of Utah, or why do you think you're the guy that is doing this for the state of Utah? And why do you feel like Look, you have to? I don't want to say have to, but why do you do it? Look, I mean, we have incredible people in Utah. I'm not the spokesperson for the state of Utah, but what I can explain is I think it's one of the most unique places on the planet. Um, I've been everywhere, you know, obviously in tech, we've got offices in 26 different locations around the world. Um, Utah's different. It's unbelievable. It's good for the soul in a world where wellness and mental health and all of that is an all time low. It, I get back to Utah whenever I travel and I just take a deep breath and I'm like, this is incredible. The mountains right there, the growth. Before, people would just go there and then they would leave. I mean, 7 million people come in to ski and now people are going there and saying, wow, I actually have this ecosystem that's here. We can be successful here. I can raise kids here. Um, it's awesome. And we don't want more people moving to Utah. <laughs> because happen. I think we have, we have enough. But... Uh, I think the idea, though, is um, is this platform or the role that we're in, it's, it's, it's hard for me not to, you know, have a ton of pride about this state and everything it's about. And it's really cool because typically we have pride about different things. We have pride about our family. We have pride about our sports. But to actually have pride about an entire state, um, it's invigorating. And I think there's a lot of people in Utah who feel that way. And there's a lot of people outside of Utah who are going just like yourselves. You come, you felt it, you were there, you were like, Actually, this is different. You know, you guys came to the game, you went through, and, and that's what's happening. And so there's a lot of momentum around this amazing state right now. And I just couldn't be um, happier to be in a spot where it's authentic. It's truly authentic that, that I believe it. Everything great I've got in my life has come from that. So it's pretty cool. How many billions? Oh, geez. We don't, we don't, we don't think that way. Do you Google that and say, that's all right? <laughs> what what they say? And how how often do you keep track of that? How often do you keep track of that? Of what? Of like, hey, how much am I worth on this particular day? <laughs> do you keep do you uh, zero? Never, like ever. So how, when that's, do you ever? That's, when that's you how think, other people keep score. Okay, I respect that. But mm -hmm. at some point, you had to look at the number to see if you could afford an NHL team, right? With the franchise, and like when yeah, you I do, mean, when we go ahead. No, like when we, I, I'll never forget. We sold our company. I mean, we've been. Super fortunate. We've been super blessed. I remember selling our company in 2018 and like it's been a ride that we had worked for for a really long time that involved so many amazing people. And I specifically remember sitting down with my wife, Ashley, um, who you met. And like, awesome. Awesome. And I was like, hey, babe, like, check this out. Like, <laughs> this is what just happened to our accounts. Like, it's kind of weird. And she literally just looked at me and was like, uh, scary. <laughs> I yeah. was like, wait, that's the answer, scary? And, like, reality is, is, like, there's only a certain amount you need, and the rest is, like, what are you going to go do with it? And, like, how are you going to do this? And really, if you think about it, like, sports franchises, and there's not a bigger platform to go and affect community change. What we've done with our scholarships, um, we have 60,000 kids playing junior jazz, like, uh, tech's great and it's an incredible platform. Sports is the greatest unifying platform of all time. I mean, look at Buffalo. Yes. Look at them sh sh like shoveling. Look at the energy. Look at the reaction of jazz fans when the Delta Center comes back. Like you start looking at what sports can do. Um, it's invigorating. And so the idea to continue that with hockey um, and, and try to replicate what what the jazz have done for the community, you got to go for it. You got to go for it. Even if it's taking your life words and your life savings and putting it all towards that, what else are you going to do with it? I buy more visors. Well, I was I mean, about like, to say, Jerry yeah. Jones, Jerry Jones told a story to Joe Buck, I believe 
on this one interview show that was really good. It, I don't think they do it anymore. Jerry said, uh, you know, there are people who are about 230 yards away from the green. There's a little bit of water in between them. And they decide to lay up and then hope for a birdie maybe that maybe get there. I'm going for the green every fucking time. And he <laughs> talked about his investment in the Dallas Cowboys. He went all in on the Dallas Cowboys, I guess. Everybody kind of misconstrued how much money he potentially had. He was spending every dollar he had on the Dallas Cowboys. Now they're the most profitable, most expensive franchise on earth. And that mindset of like going for it is certainly a reason for his success. It sounds like you have a very similar thing. It sounds like you have that same mentality. Yeah, I'm still heavily involved in tech, so I kind of have a day job a little bit on that side. Um, and we're we're probably Jerry and I have probably have very different strategies um, on on how we <laughs> operate. Um, you know, I, I I don't do that many interviews, and but hey, but you're killing this look, one, I mean, though. Crush hey, hey, crushing this no, one. Hey, there's no question. There's no question that that like what he's done has been his style and his way and it's worked and he's gotten a bunch of people around him to to go and do that and so in a scenario if you're going to go into sports there's probably no other way you can't tiptoe into it and say hey we're just gonna we're gonna be laying up here here you you really need to go all the way in and like that isn't that is it's it's something you learn throughout and and i don't think it's any different than what you guys are doing it's like hey if we're if we're doing all of this online and we're working like we are, we are in it. We're gonna buy the Thunderdome. We're gonna make a good. We're gonna we're gonna set up golf holes just for Ryan when he comes to Miss. to try to hit a hole in one and not be successful. But like windy day, and, and we're gonna that was tough. Yeah, that was a windy windy day, day. Yeah. windy day. But like no, there's no other way. Like what was I saying? There's nothing good you've got in your lives where you haven't like pushed beyond your comfort zone and where you thought it was. So naturally you've got to be around people where you can look around and be like all right we're going come hella high water we're going and we're going together yeah. and that's 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 in the dna in utah it, it, probably you know in a in an unfair rate because that's what breeds the entrepreneurship that's there because you need each um, other and that's you need each other, and I love that. I love that, and that's what you feel when you go to Utah. Now, Utah doesn't have the exclusive on it. No one does. No one's got the exclusive on smart people and people that are willing to do that, but um, that's what I love about our state, and that's what gets me wanting to promote it. Hell yeah. Hey, you, though, having to look at the price of an NHL team and then being like, yep, we can do that. Sure. That's a cool moment. Yeah. 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 Congratulations on that. Yeah. Not a lot of we, humans we in the have, history can do that. Not a lot of humans in the history. We have – we have a bunch of amazing people who have gotten behind SCG from Ryan Sweeney at Excel Partners in the Bay Area to Mike Cannon Brooks in Australia, D Wade, Arctos. Like, we have Big incredible people, yeah. Big J, who are not in Utah, but are Utah and want to invest there. And I like it when I like it when people almost a little bit outside our state love our state as much as those inside. And they're all in, and so um, that's where we're at, and we're super fortunate. We're super fortunate. You, you've crushed it, pal. Connor has a question for you about something, though. Yeah, right. Uh -oh. both I, times. I, I don't know, Connor, if you're allowed to ask more questions after last time. Well, what did he say last what time? What did he say last time? Well, you were like, hey, I'm not going to do the, the BYU stuff, and then, <laughs> and then I, then I sat down, and, you're, and, then, and then I sat down, and you're like, well, I'm not going to do it. But Connor might. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, because Ryan asked me, he said, uh, are you, you're going to bring up soaking, I assume? I'm like, well, I will not. But Connor's first question mm. probably will probably be about soaking. <laughs> yeah. And then show started about two minutes later. Yep. I mean, that's how things go. Yeah, you know, pretty matter of fact. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, hey, you've handled I, it very well, by the way. Absolutely. We still don't know what's real and what isn't. Just want to let you know that. Well, it's not. None of it's real. That's. I told you last see, time. I, I don't know. Think it's, if it think it's real, I've got a bunch of new startups for you guys to invest in. Nice. Uh, well, actually, with yeah, your success rate, I was yeah, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, we, like shake we would like to, <laughs> we would like to potentially get in there. <laughs> yeah. But we've heard from yeah. a younger Con generation. Con yeah, Connor, what's up? What do you got? Yeah, I'm just you know rattling ideas here. A shake weight for a bunk bed. That is kind oh, of in the bed. Stop. In the yeah, so on, like face down. It's like a stripper pole on the bottom Come of the bed. On, it's like face down. Yeah, actually. boom. 
Wow. Now, what's your real question? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, piss, get a piston. Yeah, piston. In there. Yeah, there yeah. it is. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Boom. Look at us helping. <laughs> we're not. Go. We're nowhere near Mormon. No. We got a lot Two of friends that are Mormon. Two yes. Thera guns blasting it. Two Thera guns Same in your hand. Turn hey, I black. saw you with Austin Collie the other day. Bingo. I know the. I feel like I know the Mormon community pretty well. Yeah. Austin looks incredible. How about Puka? How about our boy Puka out of BYU? Oh, love love Puka. Puka. He was great on our show. Man, he came on our show. He was phenomenal. We love was on. the Mormons. We're I trying to help that, out. I, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> no, just something to think about. You flip on a light switch. Yeah, exactly. And there's 17 Theraguns <laughs> underneath the bed. <laughs> Oh yeah, geez. and then you activate it like it's a massage chair. Like you got different Rolling. settings. Yep. Yeah, you can do the bunny to the turtle. Yeah, to kind of figure out where you want to be. We're so nice. But how come nobody ever says how kind we are and consider it that we give our ideas to others? Yeah, and the only price would be twenty percent of the Utah hockey team. Yeah, bingo. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was simple, good business. But uh, Ryan, I just, I just want to tell you one thing first before I ask you my question. You looked fantastic uh, on the show today. You looked fantastic when you came in here and you sat down. I mean, shit, the photo of Gumpy, you and Pat from late October, you look fantastic. I know there are a plethora of great photos of you and that big, handsome son of a bitch, Jay, just walking around Utah. I checked Twitter. Uh, a lot of people think that Gumpy is tagging the wrong Twitter profile because your profile picture doesn't look as cool as you always look. So... Not, Can we not, change the photo? Yeah, may, I think maybe you just need to get in there, change the photo up, and kind of show how cool you look on a daily basis because people don't think you're the same person, and that is not okay. Because of my Twitter profile? That's yes. what people are saying. That's what people are saying on the internet. Your Twitter profile photo doesn't reflect how fucking cool you are when you come on the show and, look. and just look from a day-to-day -day basis. So just oh, telling you that sorry. from a fucking asshole in Indiana. But with that being said, obviously you have the plans immediately to play in the Delta Center. Have there been any other things thrown around? You know, we talked about Jerry Jones. Have you thought about building like a Ryan Smith world, like kind of like a Utah jazz hockey team world where you have the restaurants, kind of like the Staples Center, the way the Kings do it? They have a Staples no, Center? No, for right? sure. Yeah, okay. Please. Yeah, for, for sure. So I think, I think if you take a step back and you say, okay, we've got 60,000 juniors playing junior jazz you know, it, who have come through and played junior jazz. And it's, it's unbelievable. What does that mean? I don't think if I you, know what that means. That's just a youth league. So we have a, we have, yeah, we have a youth program and everyone in Utah plays junior jazz. And as you're a youth, you come in and you sign up for it and it's helped grow the game. You get a couple tickets to the game and it becomes part of who you are. I think one of the benefits that Utah can do with the youngest demographic for hockey is if we actually set up a hockey specific arena and we're still whiteboarding a lot of this, but if you set up, a uh, hockey-specific arena, one of the limitations on hockey is definitely ice time. Imagine a world where you could actually create the movement with the Junior Hockey League similar to what we've done um, with the Jets. And so that would be an idea that we would have, and then that would actually dictate us saying, okay, how would you actually create a full environment of entertainment around that? But Actually, given hockey, it's moment. I mean, we got one of the best basketball arenas in the country in the Delta Center oh. with the slope. Like, ultimately, it would be really, really cool to to give hockey this moment that people can rally around. Is that Batman? Gare? No. <laughs> that would have been cool. Imagine if he says, you got to keep. You know, yeah. Stop yeah. talking. Yeah, uh, just FaceTime him in. Yeah, that would have been amazing, actually. He, he actually, uh, when he joined the program, he had his uh, button down, unbutton. That's yeah, his hair Sitting on the yeah. side of his all. He looks super cool. We asked him about expansion. He said he doesn't have an exact time of when it's going to happen, but he's always looking into it. Maybe you're able to kick him over there. And it'd be great for the sport of hockey to have another home, yes. especially a home that loves hockey and loves winter sports. Go ahead, AJ. Have you uh, kicked around any possible team names for this uh, team that you may be uh, having come to town soon? No, the internet is full of them. Holy cow. I mean, we have more graphic designers and uh, brand agencies in the state of Utah than I've seen. I mean, there was a bunch out there. I saw the Utah Venom. I saw um, the Yetis, Utah Yeti with a killer logo. I thought that was pretty cool, actually. That's dope. Um, especially with the U and the Y. They finally come together. Oh, because right? uh, look at that. BYU, uh, whoa, Utah. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so I think that. that there's there's a lot there, but oh. like. I mean, our number one goal is like, let's land the plane here and get NHL in Utah, and we can we can kind of worry about all the other stuff. 
after that, I don't care how he gets here. Like we, we just got to go. And I think, I mean, NHL was gracious enough. I mean, we weren't really a hundred percent expecting the response that they had today. Um, but them leaning in and saying, Hey, look, like we know Utah is an incredible market where we haven't been asleep or watching the growth in Utah and everything else. And the desirability of that, of that region. And then you and everything you guys are doing at SCG. Um, and we'll continue discussions. I think that's a, that's a really, really um, good approach, and especially one from from Gary. And um, you know, no one can see all of the future, but that's that's a good acknowledgement of where we're at. Expansion's the only option because obviously uh, the Phoenix Coyotes play in a thing called the Mullet Arena, oh, God. Uh, which doesn't even change over the logos in the arena for the Coyotes from the Arizona State hockey team. So that team has obviously been chatted about being moved out of Arizona for a long time. Just because it's not good for hockey, what's taking place down there is how hockey people feel. That is not how we are saying this is just the reality of the situation. Has that been chatted about or only expansion? Uh, just about every interview I've done, but um, okay, good, like, good. I think <laughs> I'm happy we hit. Yeah. Nice, yeah, I'm happy we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, I think our goal is NHL, and and I'll leave the rest on how all that happens to Gary expansion. I mean, we went through the expansion process, but you know we're ready and we're ready to go, and we just want to be true partners with with the league, like we've done and everything else, and you know let let those powers be figure out what the best way to, to get something here on whatever timeline they fill. We need, to get, so, them, we need to get them out of Arizona. Gino and Malkin scoring own goals mm-hmm. in there. You Gross. Know? Guys just don't even play good hockey when they go. No, Bumpy no. ice. Even though we love Phoenix, we do, we wish Great. that was not the case. It's my favorite place yeah, to travel it's a, to. It's beautiful. Uh, last question. Out, outside of Utah. That's your favorite place outside of Utah. And Pittsburgh. Be honest. Love hey, are you guys ready for All-Star game? No. Indy? We're not. No, Ryan, you you came okay. with a lot of All ideas. Right. What was that, like three weeks ago? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, we got the Super Bowl coming up. Yeah. Ryan's like, hey, listen, yeah. I got ideas. We just had the All-Star game in Utah. Here's some things you could potentially do. I'm like, who's are we getting TikTok to do that? Who's yeah. talk, Who are you talking yeah, to? Who's, is to Taco going to do that, Ryan? How, how are we? Yeah, you know? you're, like, you're like looking around. <laughs> okay, I will. Yeah, Ryan, I will actually do that. But we are, um, I think Adam Silver's coming on. Yes. The week. Sweet. I, we are promoting the that the NBA All-Star game's coming to Indianapolis. Are you coming out here? I'm gonna try. Hmm. That's a no. I'm try. Yeah, just say no. That's a no. No, it's never a no. I got five little kids, man. Like, like everything's day to day. Five? I understand. Five's a lot. That, that's you got to start in five down there. They're, hey, cute kids too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just see them. Oh, yeah. yeah. I will say Utah filled with very similar looking, very handsome and beautiful people. Uh huh. That is. It's awesome, isn't it? I mean, I saw, hey. I saw 14 of the same guy at the Utah Jazz game. Man, I was like, that, that guy, that, wasn't that guy just putting? Now he's doing this. Is that the same? Are we picking random people from the arena or the same guy? Yeah. It was all pretty much the yeah. same people. Let's talk about the Jazz, though. Hey. Okay. We're hot. We're good. We're playing. What happened? Where? Hey, let's go. Yeah. Jazz are hot right hey, now. Hey, Coach. Yeah, Coach Hardy's doing an incredible job getting dialed in. I mean, I think we, you know, at the beginning getting the lineups right and everything. But, you know, I think we'd won. 12 out of the last 15 or for that we we didn't have as i mean going on the road stuff we kind of have a brutal road trip right now and um but i mean we won five out of six at home including you know denver and and some of these other really really hot teams and um it's good it's good to see the young guys step up and um we're excited we're a long way but i i think given um how the team's rolling lowry colin jc like it's 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 fun to watch. I mean, we went to the game um, together. We've been to two games together, and um, it's been it's been pretty incredible. Yeah, watching you watch the team is awesome. Invested, mm-hmm. like not only financially but yeah, actually emotionally. You know, <laughs> in, in between quarters, we're take, we're break, that was a bad quarter, mm-hmm. and we're walking it off, and we're going to the, and you're in there. It's that's a cool thing to see. I think that's another thing that Gary Bettman has to understand. Like you're in there. Somebody's on the door. Last question because you brought up your coach making a big play there. Yeah, young coach, uh, obviously Will Hardy. I don't know how I don't know how hands on or off you were with that interview and hiring process in NFL right now. We're kind of in that mm. in that era. You know, a lot of second, third interviews. Uh when I guess did you know uh Will Hardy was the guy throughout that interview process? Yeah, so so First of all, that I mean, that came quickly right after kind of taking over. I'd never been – I've been through a bunch, obviously, a bunch of interview process, but never through um, an NBA 
interviewing process and probably one so public. Um, but I mean, Danny Ainge is the one that ultimately led that and brought myself, JC, um, or Jay-Z, Justin Zanuck on our side and, and Dwayne Wade through that. And we went through a, a long group. I mean, if you, if you actually think about it, I think it's been pretty noted. Um, we got down to a last couple people. Will was definitely the youngest, but, um, Will's got it. He's, he's a star. Um, and, you know, you just, you just felt something in there and you said, Hey, we're going to, we're going to go do this. He'd never been a head coach before. Um, but Danny had done this in the past. If you look at Brad Stevens coming out and, um, you know, him identifying talent, that's what I think he's best in the world at. And, you know, Dwayne having all the confidence in Will as an NBA player and what that would be like and locker room stuff. And then, um, myself ultimately just trying to get everyone's opinion and hey do we all feel the same way and we were unanimous and um we're all in with will and i think since then um look it's i've never had so much fun um in an organization running and it, it's about the people you're working with and i think that's what's really really cool and i just feel like i get to go to work um with some of the coolest people on the planet yeah will is really cool. he has six shoes yeah i mean he has chains on there, absolutely <laughs> clean like just like this guy yeah. but then the way he was talking and handling everything it's like the next generation here is kind of happening in the nba seems like you guys have a guy and hopefully you'll have a hockey team soon we appreciate you joining us pal all right guys Ladies peace out we'll see you hey hey, guys. hey listen let's get it sorted on the soaking thing please come on think about that idea we need Nobody we need new it. content we need new content <laughs> no, we don't. What was that about? He's a Ryan Smith. <laughs> yeah, Ryan. That is funny to think about because he's like, maybe his generation did not have the the thoughts to put teammate underneath mm -hmm. and yeah. do the entire thing. So then as that is being the conversation discussed about his alma mater pretty much, he's like, what the hell happened? Why is this the conversation? We got a lot of other stuff going on. 18,000 people in there. Arena last night yeah. for BYU. They love sports out there. Mm -hmm. It's also something to do. Mm -hmm. You know, like he said 251 sellouts for the Utah Jazz. It's like it's something to do. Like, let's go do this. And the entire city shows up seemingly. For yeah, and they haven't been good for 251 straight home games, by the way. Like, it's not as if they have been a fantastic team. They've been <laughs> up and down, kind of through it for a little bit here. And they're still going. Like, that's, that says a lot about the people. Utah. Hopefully he gets a team out there. Huh? Uh, Nick, what are the chances? Uh, how do we feel about it? It's just literally if Gary Bettman wants it to happen or Yeah, not? I'd say pretty good, especially off the heels of the success in Seattle and Vegas. I mean, that's got to be uh, Gary and the other NHL owners. They see that money pouring in and that has to just light their eyes up so that's expansion he didn't say no to the potential another team he mm -hmm. said we just want to be in the nhl yeah. so however that works out that's up to gary bettman in the nhl that phoenix team has been discussed to be a move for a long time long time. aq was in the building the other day the mullet arena how'd it go great atmosphere not a bad seat in the house but well the issue is there's like 5600 seats and it's just you can't make any money off that so they know they need to get an arena. They just got to get approval somewhere. They've tried like six places. We're coming down to the wire. We got to make a move. And they beat the Pens. They smoked the Pens. Damn. Yeah, they didn't beat them. They're feisty. They're feisty Killed on the ice. Well, yeah, everybody relax. Okay, Gina and Malkin score our own goal. Yeah, and no, that's a bad reflection. Crosby might have had a top ten goal of his career. I mean, it was pretty. It was pretty awesome. And yes. no one will remember. No, people will remember no. Sidney Crosby. No, they'll remember the own goal and the fact that they're playing in front of – the fact that Sidney fucking Crosby is playing in front of 5,600 people. What a disrespect to the NHL. That's not good. One thing that makes Pittsburgh people feel good, though. I mean, let's go, Penn's chance were loud. Yeah, it was all Pittsburgh people. It's, right? I mean, it doesn't matter what sport it is, Pittsburgh shows up. I mean, if it was a Cardinals game, it would be 70%. Steeler fans like they just travel. AJ knows it. Green Bay does the same thing. Yeah, not Pirates. Not Pirates. No. Well, mm. they just signed to roll this Chapman. They might be back. I saw that big time signing. Will, will we pay him? Uh, who is this? Ten guy? and a half million. He used to be really He's the good. Best was, closer in the game. Just telling Tony, if you need a guy, if you got a you know three run lead, if you need a guy to come in against the seven, eight, nine guys in the order to walk seven, walk eight, and give up a homer to nine, <laughs> tie the game, going to extras. <laughs> Chapman's your guy. This is a free baseball. Yeah. That's He's a disgruntled. Okay. This is a disgruntled. Guy. Congrats, Yankee guys. AJ Jeez. knows it. As a Cincy, Cincy Red, he was unbelievable. He's going to be. Yeah. Tell you what, if the Buccos are winning when they get to the end of the seventh and Bednar and this guy comes in, this guy.
What's his guy's name? Aroldis Chapman. Chapman. His mm-hmm. big issue is he's a closer and he can't fucking throw strikes. And when he does throw strikes, he throws them right. We're paying down. him what? Ten and a half million he's a never, year. Yes, he's he's never never one year. He had three saves, saves last year. One year. Three saves. Three saves. He's, he's got a live arm. Games. He's got a live he arm. Does have we'll a, it in. He does have a live arm. The only problem saves, is with that live arm. Uh, when he does throw strikes, he throws it right down the middle, hundred miles an hour. You guys see. Gives up a lot of ding dongs. So we won't see. They're never on TV, but we'll. They're on no, TV what, what every fucking night. Jack. What's going to happen with Chapman is he's going to play for the you know up until the All Star break. This guy doesn't know. And then he is going to get traded to a contender. It happens every year. He signs with some shitbag team for about ten and a half million, and then they're like, "Hey, this guy fucking sucks. He throws hard. Let's get him the hell out of here." Last year, same thing happened. What happens? He gets traded to the Rangers. He wins a World Series. Bingo. So kind of. This guy's World Series champion. Yeah. Mo- isn't this, <laughs> welcome to Pittsburgh. Isn't this the times. fucking Yamamoto guy? Okay, we're going to uh, trust yeah. what he's saying. You're right. <laughs> well, that, that was an insider take. This is purely a baseball take, and I've watched a lot of Veraldis Chapman, and yeah, he used to be good. He fucking sucks. Now. So <laughs> oh enjoy. <laughs> he was awesome in 2016. <laughs> enjoy. He was. How long ago was 2016? Oh, yeah, that was about fucking eight years ago. That was a long time in baseball. But, but you guys will tell us how you really feel about this guy. The Pirates are investing money in something. Bingo. You're, hey, why, are you, why are you shooting down all my hopes and dreams? I told you exactly what to expect. So the first time that happens, when they got a three run lead, and you're thinking, hey, let's go. Ten and a half this, million. This, this is why we paid this guy. He's going to come in. He's going to throw four straight balls to the seven right, hitter. Right, right, he's going right, to throw right, four right. straight balls to the eight hitter. Not right. a single strike. And then he'll, no. So what he'll do. To the nine hitter, <laughs> he'll burn one down the middle 100 miles an hour. Because he just threw eight straight balls. Exactly. And that guy will whiff on the first pitch. Almost knock that over. He'll whiff on the first pitch. And then what he'll do is he'll throw a fucking 82 mile an hour saucer, just a little slider that ain't fooling anybody. And that guy's going to hit it into the fucking Allegheny. And oh, then no. and then you guys are going nice hitter. Everest. They said the same nine thing about A.J. Burnett. And that dog led them to the playoffs. Okay. <laughs> Mark my words. It, it is, I've seen it happen many times. Fucking nine hitter is the worst hitter on the team, right? Typically. typically. <laughs> He's going to know that that's Might not... be the pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> ah, the Pirates. We're doing it today. Hey, we're making moves, Tony. Yeah, Pam, people. That's what you guys have been begging for. Rest of the bullpen any good? Yeah, Bednar's a dog. Okay. That's He's nice. closer? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Local yeah. guy. Back-to-back <laughs> All-Stars. You guys just got... As the owner of the Pirates, we just got done talking to Ryan Smith, owner of the Jazz. They're having a success run. This guy's pulling all the right... Right triggers, dude. Yes. This guy knows what to He's do. He's the only owner making money in the major leagues. Bingo. You guys got Paul Skeens. And Paul Skeens. They do what are Paul, we talking about here? Paul Skeens. Is he on our team still? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is he good? Oh, yeah. Did he do good number last year? No, dominated. number one pick, the LSU pitcher. No, I know who he is, but did he just do minors last year? Yeah, he fucking dominated the minors. Of course he did. Wait, that he, mustache? Call him up. Huh. That's crazy. What's that? I don't know. My <laughs> brain might have just broken. I just figured for some reason right after the national championship after they win, he's straight to the majors because he's the That's what one. I thought, too. He's going straight to the Pirates. Yeah, yeah but I know. The Pirates are too good for that. No, no. The no, no one who gets – that's just not a thing, so let's not be fucking – Could yeah. be. Can well, be. That's, that's why, why I said, that's why I said I must be a dipshit. I just figured the number one pick of the draft – That guy who's six foot seven. Yeah. He'll get an invite to spring training mm-hmm. this year. He'll have a Oh, he might shot. make the team. He might have a fucking guy for the Pirates. Great. Baseball sucks. That's how it always goes. Yeah. Well, this baseball season ends in uh, college season ends in June, and then oh, can't that. have the guy you're you know potentially sinking four hundred million dollars. You can't have him throw you know a thousand innings his his first year. You know. Don't worry, we ain't sinking four hundred million dollars in anybody. No, yeah, I know. I mean, he'll be great for a couple of years, and then a couple of years down the line, either the Yankees is Kutch the back or not? Yes, he is. Okay, we got Kutch, we got Chapman. Yep. Kutch is like eighty years old. Still playing, Jim Leland, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Hall no. Congrats, Is Jim it Leland. really? He's going in. Who? Jim Leland. Just, he's going into the Hall of mm-hmm. Fame. Congratulations, Jim. Love, love you, Jim. Jim. Not as much as the mayor loves Jim. No. no. <laughs> but we love. Just the mere mention of Jim's name popped the mayor so hard he made that sound mm-hmm. in the microphone. And yep. Connor will obviously never forget it. No, never. I mean, when you're playing for Jim Leland, you do. <laughs> That was, a great, that was one of my favorite moments of all time of this entire show. As if we, Sean Casey, the mayor of Pittsburgher, who played in the majors for like forever, uh-huh. was a first baseman. They called him the mayor because anytime anybody else got on base, he's having full small talk with yep. everybody mm-hmm. in the entire majors. He used to get great ball contact. Oh, yeah. yeah, let's oh. definitely call him, actually. He used to get great ball <laughs> contact. He used to be able to spray it around the yard so much so that he got hired to be the hitting coach for the New York fucking yeah. Yankees. No mm-hmm. big deal. It did not work out as well as everybody had hoped because the team couldn't see the fucking yeah, curveball anyways. Yeah. So he's back 
back on TV. We love him. He loves Jim Leland. Loves him. Loves Jim Leland more than anybody else. Currently calling him to see what the actual take is on this Chapman guy because I'm a little bit down in my dumps after seeing that whole thing. Because I saw an internet report that the Pirates are paying a guy. Oh, yeah? I saw some real excitement from people in Pittsburgh. And then now your immediate take is, the guy's going to blow games for you. That's all he's doing. He's only got three saves uh, in the entire season of 170 games. He left. used to be an elite guy. A- elite guy. He is no longer that elite guy. But that's uh, fine. All right. Well, let's move off of baseball because there's no reason to talk about it right now or uh, most times of the year. Amen. Thank and, you. Unless we're breaking you're going the back to the You're going back to the Hembo deal? Thank you. No, nah, we'll do that tomorrow. Okay. Oh, God, yeah. Today we got another show. Yeah, yeah, we, we do. do. Go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get smarter. It's time to show the respect to the big guys. It's time to go in the trenches with AQ Shipley. Thank you. Hell yeah. Here we go. AQ, we're excited for this one because there's a lot go running in the divisional round. Wow. There is. There is. And it's a shame the Green Bay Packers didn't win because they had some. They, they ran mm-hmm. the shit out of the ball and had yes, some really good did. stuff going. Aaron Jones, fourth quarter, 50-some yard run. Bingo. Thought that one was over. I, know. I think we all thought that thing was over. The 49ers got to get that fixed because they attacked the edges. That was a clear game plan by the Packers. I wish I could talk more a about it. Receivers. A lot of receiver block and a lot of get to the edge, and they, they gashed them. You think MCDC saw that or no? Everybody sees it. But, again, everybody's got to – it's – like I said, Bowles had a completely different game plan. All the shit we talked about the week before, <laughs> none of it showed up, just like I thought it would. Okay, sweet. But here we go. Let's talk about this one. And this is why this is an absolute nightmare, right? We got the Baltimore Ravens. And when they get in short yardage or goal line, you can't be right because they're going to fake the counter this way. But the X factor, they got Ricard going. So everybody's following him. Oh, shit. They think it's just a downhill run. Nope. Let's go. Let's go with the whirly bird out. Oh, no. And then you get the tackle out in front. Ooh. I mean, it's, it's, it's like stealing candy. It really is. Yeah, that, that play should be illegal. It really should. I mean, Kyler Murray does it too. When you got a guy like that and they – cram the box inside on short yardage or goal line, that clearly is the guy. Hey, we're going to follow 42 in the pulling guard. Oh, shit. Don't go to him. Look at the ball action. Everybody just goes out. Yep, exactly. He does a great job. Yep. I mean, pretty easy when Stanley's holding on the outside. Right? I mean, the left guard held the shit out of him too. I mean, <laughs> hey, they're not calling anything. It's, it's, <laughs> yep. it's a lot of it's a lot of shit going on in there. They're not seeing any of that hey, stuff. Playoffs the have been very let a lot let them play. Love it. Exactly. And look, Houston gets in a goal line defense. I mean, shit, they're gonna we're in a six-two. Safeties are down. You only got one guy deep, really, and they crash hard here. Which that. Right there. That's yeah. What, that's AQ, what, what if 95 goes up field right away and tries to, like, set the edge? Yeah, I mean, now you're now you're in a predicament. Now you're in a predicament because now Lamar's got to make somebody miss out in space, but you are banking on that. And, look, Stanley does a good job. He goes like that, and he's literally letting them. He's oversetting to the mm-hmm. outside to get him to go inside so then he can just bluff him and get outside. There it is. Steals one. And then, tackles a guy. Yep. And whoop. that's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, ridiculous. He doesn't take a big shot either. Nope. Ever. Ever. He always knows when to get down. Even on that draw. Like, yeah. he, mm-hmm. he, he t- takes a shot, but it's never that big. It's never fully clean, yeah, right? Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. This play was awesome. And, look, everybody's talking about this one. You're going to see the tight end going to kind of start his motion, and we've seen it all. Everybody's talked about it on TV. Purdy sees the play clock going down. No, 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 we don't need him to go. We're going to get him back in the fullback. Now watch this. Uh, oh, no, no, stay, stay, no, stay, no, stay, no. stay. Because stay. Yushek is telling him to go over yonder. Hey, yep. Kyle, you're supposed to be over here. Yep. And old Brock Purdy says, nah, 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 we don't have enough time, guys. Bingo. This is a part of George Kittle potentially saying that Brock Purdy was starting to express some of his opinions, loved hearing it. Absolutely. And that, this is huge by him, actually, because a lot of young quarterbacks, they just look at the playbook and they're like, shit, we know we got to send the motion. But he knows that no matter whether he's over there or whether he's over here, we can still get the playoff. And they're able to do that. They end up running the zone here. We get use check up on the safety. He's going to go inside out, help him. Watch the job here. Look at that fucking hole. We get him one-on-one with a safety. Whoop. Now watch this block. Mm. Oh. oh, now I'm sure you guys are all going to say, oh, yeah. fuck, block, block in the back. No. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit, but boys are playing. Huh? But they're playing, and, and you always have to give credit to the IU, to Jennings, to all those guys, because they're the ones that make these home run plays hit. Because they come down, they hustle, they get a fucking block at the safety at 12 yards. Right as he's about to get some ankles, and boom, we're out the gate. How nice that grass is. Gorgeous. What would you call this uh, run scheme? This is 26 zone. So fullback and tight end are working in cahoots. They got Sam to strong safety. But that's the beauty about always having a fullback is now we create angles. Because if we don't have a fullback, this push is out to here. That center now has to get to here. But because you have the fullback, we get angles and we're able to get everybody up inside. Well, don't you think AQ also like the – quarterback reverse pivot and pitching it is much different yeah. than him opening it up and handing it off. Huge, because it gets what? these guys flowing, right? They, and they love doing this. And now watch. 
who knows? I don't want to give away anything. They, they want you to think it's a. They want you to think, hey, this is a, this is going wide. We got to take off. We got to get on our horse, and then boom, they knock it right up the middle. That's exactly right. And then they also have the cutback out of that too. They get the toss game, get everybody flowing. They seal everybody to this side, and then you get the huge cut right there. You get everything going back. They'll let him get across. I mean, they got so much shit out of this. It's so good. Who's the offensive line coach? Chris Furster. He's one of the best in the history of football. Right? Oh, in yeah. the history Big of football. Time. Big time, yeah. He has to be good. Has to be. Ha- mm-hmm. Must be. If he wasn't the best, he'd be fucking pushing a broom somewhere. Right, bingo. That's exactly yeah. right. He must be the greatest oh. to ever. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And spin you just it. think about all that. If you could spin it. The high energy guy. Yep. yep. Yeah. Absolutely. For the high so energy you guy. You do not want to see him in an alley. How about the Chiefs getting on the in the trenches? Here we I go. love oh. it. I love it. And look, and look who the back is that gets on this. Right? It's not Pacheco. We got Edwards Hilaire. Pahoo? Pacheco. Pacheco? Did I add an end in there? Sorry. Uh, Anyways, we got Edwards Hilaire coming out here. But this is, I mean, he runs about a 4 7 40, but that's okay. We get get the down block by Trey Smith. And here's the key, right? So let's go back real quick. I love this scheme because all this is is a classic inside zone. But what they're doing is they cut the defense right here. We've seen this a bunch. Now, this is a great job by this tackle because he's got to reach him. But then when he gets the slant here, he's got to be able to take one step and redirect and pin him down inside. So then Creed gets around and gets the backer. Oh, yeah. Tony Roma said they're pulling a center, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Remember? Yeah. They don't yeah. normally do that. And this is just a this is just an adjustment to your classic inside zone because they would normally do that. But then you get full flow. So now they cut the defense and then you get the kick out and then boom. Out and with Space, Jason Kelsey 20. in the building. Jason Kelsey, probably the most notorious center that's ever pulled. Mm-hmm. They kind of started it with him. And then on the other side of this game, Mitch Morse does this play a lot. They Mitch. Do, they, yeah, they do a lot with, okay. uh, with, oh, the, with the athletic Texas center. boy. That yep. big son of a bitch, 62, running downfield, Joe Tunley. What is the deal with uh, him and his peck? Do you think he's going to be able to? I don't know, man. It looked tough. Excuse me. I don't know if you saw the play, so wherever we're looking, right? So he's got the three tech here. And he got he literally, it was the touchdown, the last touchdown. He goes like this to get him up the field, and the guy's ripping here, and he goes to torque him out. And mm. right when he went to torque this, Gave you, out. See, you see him just go down and grab. And the pack pretty important for offensive line. Especially the inside pack. I don't think people realize that. Listen, when you're playing guard, that hole when you set as the left guard, this arm is huge because that stops the inside move. That stops everything. All the power comes from there. You're torquing here. Jeez. So is he, this is big. The this strain. Is big. They're calling it a strain. They're calling it a strain, but this is a this is a big deal. We but gotta a watch strain that is a forward. small tear. Right? Yeah. 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 God, so I also saw good. the running back has a toe this week. So yeah. Yeah. He did not practice. Pacheco. Today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Him and Tooney yeah. did not practice. Yeah. Well. It's Wednesday. This stage. Yeah. Still early. And championship week on a Wednesday. Come on. Still yeah. early. Oh, the brand new Lions. Hell yeah. It's been their mentality. Yep. Listen, they. I had them. I got them. If we're gonna if we're gonna play that game, this is the best offensive line going into championship weekend, hands down. Let's wow. go! Hands Come down. on, AQ. This is the best hands defensive down. line, in my Whoa. opinion. This is, gonna, this is gonna be a great matchup. But again, this is the exact same scheme that the 49ers ran. These two are in cahoots, right? They're working Sam to strong safety. There it is, boom to boom. But the key is watch this guy on the backside. He does the old Trent Williams move, the little swipe down, right? We've seen that a bunch where Trent goes like Veteran. this, gets him down, and now you get the seal, and there's the cutback. And then he runs up on. Oh, yeah, I mean, see, uh, see you later. What do you say to that? Him up. And look at Pro Sam Bowl, Brown. Pro Bowl, Bill All Pro Brown. safety yep. with forty yards of space in between. You run up on his feet and got to make it's a tough. move one way or another. It's tough. Yeah, look at yep. that. Right there, you're right. St. Brown, great block. That, that's what puts it. That's always the one that gets you in the end zone. I promise you. The receiver blocks downfield are always the one that gets you in the end zone. And is that all coaching? That's all, all coaching. Yeah. It's all culture too. Yeah. It really starts with the head guy. We can say that across the board. It starts with the head guy, then it starts with your position coach, then it starts with just the want, the one to. Every day in practice, every single day, I'm sure they're on them. Like, if they're not that's putting so a body tough. on a body down there, they kill them. That's What's exactly that, right. T-Butt? That is so tough. Hey, that's your nightmare right there is a free safety. That right there. Mm-hmm. One on one. Oh, and it's big. Got a 50 way go on you. Oh, and it's Gibbs. Yeah, it's yeah. Gibbs. That's yeah. why you draft him right there. So if you look there across is. the field, it's. Uh, it's 53 and a third yards wide. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's going to be hard to count that, but that was pretty accurate. That's all the space that is available for him, and you were trying to stop it with no angle yeah. at all on anything. And a bad draft pick exposes. Yep. Mm-hmm. He could have went the other way, and I saw 
Jameson Williams, I think, coming in on the backside. So, I mean, he could have went either way there. I mean, had it. if he might set that son of a bitch up for this week, if that happens again, fake left and leave someone in the dust. Gibbs head, head is right. uh, phenomenal. Montgomery also. So yes. Good. And the best offensive line left is what A.Q. Shipley says. I would say the toughest offensive line as well. Are we showing the Ragnall? Oh, let banged. me pull it up. Frank the Tank. Let me pull it up. Foxy says, I hate you didn't want to see this, but I uh, no, I love it. I certainly I love saved it. it. Not that much. Ragnall's playing, right? Here I, it is right here. So, and Ragnall said it in his post-game press conference. This is the duo play. So here's how you block the duo play, especially when they get in a 5-3. Five, 5-3 three. Five, three diamond lick, look on the goal line. What's that mean? Okay, so you got five defense alignment, and then they put an extra backer in on the goal line. Always on goal line defense. You got eight in the front. Normal seven. seven you add an extra linebacker, make it front eight. So you get the diamond. The reason it's called a diamond is because – you got the three across, so it creates like boom, and then there's a guy back there, so it's ding, 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 right? There it is. There's your little diamond, okay. right? So always in this look when you run the duo play, your double team is here, your double team is here. So if they're running it this way, which they did, you get the deuce block to there, you get the slip block to there, mano y mano. Jeez. With 360 pounds of Vita Vea. And also, what was right now coming through? Right there's ankle the, there's and the down. right knee. There it is. There it is. This is fourth and one. Yeah, fourth both. and goal from the one, right? And it's and he gets rolled up mm. on. Yep. And that is all you want. The whole thing is, is like I, I've been told a billion times, it's the same thing as punt protection or field goal protection. They just die slowly. Look at him. But he doesn't get moved, and that's the best part. Yeah. Like, there's no penetration. The only thing that can stop that play is if he penetrates and makes the play, but there's no penetration. Blocking from He had a, what, a knee, an ankle? And an ankle, yeah. yeah. He yeah. said he's felt a little stiff, but he feels better than he thought he would, I think. Tortles. And he's got, I gotta, I gotta give love, he's got the best, he's got the best in the business for getting guys back. Brett Fisher. That's his body guru? So Brett Fisher was like the number one physical therapist. Guys, would, anytime somebody had a surgery, they'd go into Phoenix. Not Guerrero? And they'd go to him to get back on the field. Well, Brett took the head training job of the Detroit Lions. Wow, good play by the Lions. Yeah, yeah, he, he, yeah, about a month ago, he had a meniscus surgery. was back in a week and a half. Jeez. What? Yes. When, when did this guy get signed to the Lions? Within the last couple of years? Is this a part of the whole culture thing? They Who's drafted that? him in the first round. No, no, no. Oh. Fisher? Yeah. This first Ooh. year. First year today. Or first year this year. They get a guy back from a meniscus. In a, uh, got Laporta back in four days. Who yeah. is this fucking guy? What is this thing? Guru. What's his name? Brett Fisher. What a good hire by the mm -hmm. fucking Lions. Yeah, oh, yeah, I didn't even know that. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Where are we, what did you say there, AJ? We kind of all stepped on you, obviously. Oh, no, I was just asking AQ. If you're a center, is this worst-case scenario when you have a guy like Vita Bay and he is head up three inches from your face mask? Is that the toughest block? Yeah, it's like the old school. It's the stuff that you just never want to be a part of. It's the old school Oklahoma drill where it's a clear defensive drill. Like, oh, <laughs> we're about to get fucked up, right? Like, it's the worst thing. Like, all you want to do, like, as, as, as offensive lineman, you want to be able to get one, two feet in the ground, and when someone's right on top of you and it's a straight-ahead block, you can't. Like, and you're delayed because you got to get the ball. Hand between the legs. And they're all Then ready. get two feet in and then start to drive. It's like, it's a nightmare. So they get to the goal line, they go pass, 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 and the whole stadium is screaming, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. They bring in third-string running back, Craig Reynolds, and everyone's like, what is going on? And they pound it right down the middle at Vita Vea. It was awesome. Yeah. Brand new, new lines. Hell yeah. Fisher guy might be a pretty big deal. Yeah. Seems like. Brett Fisher's a dog. There he is. Look at this stud. Ran the Fisher Institute in Phoenix for a long time. Man. Director Everybody. of Player Health and Performance. Yeah, we just get people back on the field earlier than anybody ever thought it was expected. So it seems like this is happening everywhere now. It, yeah. People are starting to kind of figure things out with the human body that they haven't had before. That's right. It's good for the game. How do they get them there? I got your own they had shit pay going on in Phoenix. You got me in Detroit. And he, was, and he helped out the Cardinals. That's how I know him. So he helped us out yeah. during the football season. So he must have got somebody from the Lions that he worked on. And then that person went back to the Lions and said, hey, this guy's a weapon. Because that was happening with Guerrero. Guerrero had like a team. Before they did the whole TB12 thing, Guerrero had like a team of people that were working on a lot of people around the NFL. They would literally travel week to week to week. And... A lot of the players, I think, from all the teams that I've talked to that had this particular thing, they're like, we need to just hire this and not let it go and help anybody else. And everybody was like, we're not bringing outsiders into our building or whatever. And then when I think TB12 started up in New England, and then down in Tampa, it becomes the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Then bringing Fisher in, I assume, was a long conversation between a lot of people. But like putting egos aside and being like, what is best? Is this actually real or not? That's a great so hire. I'm, I'm putting two and two together. Two and two together. Nailed it. Disner, uh, who's the salary cap guy for the Detroit Lions, used to be salary cap guy 
Arizona Cardinals, I'm sure he had a heavy piece in mm. saying, go get that guy. Yeah, and it's not a bad play because he, yeah. he can't work on other teams too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now he's just working on your team as well uh, and not everybody else. And everybody says the best ability is what? Availability. Availability. You know? Bingo. And it's like actually going in and doing it. It's, it's awesome. Good for the, the Detroit Lions are getting everything right. So yeah, let's go. That's huge. Especially yeah. if it's working. You know, yes. that'd be like somebody hiring Neil Elitrosh and saying, like, only if our team mm -hmm. tears an Achilles can you get back in 10 weeks or whatever. Yeah. That's yeah. a weapon. Weapon. That's chess. Mm -hmm. The Lions are playing chess. That's it. Come on. Just like Aaron Glenn was. Boom. 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 Speaking of. Speaking of. They ran this play early in the game. I think we all saw this. Here's the deal. This play is really meant. They ran it last week for a touchdown, and you got Sewell who kicks out this end, and they get the downhill. Now watch this. They fake the downhill. We get over the top ball handling, shows it one way, brings it back over the top. Sue arcs it, complete bluff. Oh, you're fucked. You're in no man's land. Now let's get him out on the corner and we get the bounce play. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, wow. What a tackle. Wow. Yeah. How awesome Great. is that? Great tackle. Awesome. The Great athleticism. Penny's a, he's a yeah. freaking monster. monster. How, how old is he? 23, I believe. Yeah, he's in his like fifth year. He's like 19 Jeez. years old still. It's crazy. Look how he moves. That's not right. And yeah. he's mean. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, mean yeah. cuss. He's a dog. He he's knows awesome. it, too. He looks right. Oh, man. Hey, that's a tough day for you, pal. That's it. I mean, Levante goes from the left side. Woo. There it is. I love that. That is a hell of a touchdown. That's awesome. Yeah. They knew he was going to go flat. <laughs> yeah, that's a great that's a touchdown. Yeah. Took like, he's jumped flexing. like false step left, too. Yeah. He's flexing. Penny's flexing. A lot oh, yeah. of people pretty pumped about what they did in this particular five <laughs> that's seconds. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. How awesome is that? Because, look, he's going yonder. Yeah, mm -hmm. he takes two steps. This is yeah, and so the only person to make this play is Levante this David because you're booking him, right? Everybody else is there. You get the double team to here. You're hoping that that ball handling gets him. But look how fast this guy is. That's why this guy's. 100 plus tackles okay, for 12 yeah. years. Flat down the line. Like, no wasted. Yeah. Dog. Jeez. Hey, great work, pal. Hey, baby, thank you. All right, boys. Thank you. Hey, Kush, you? before we get out of here, you want to do a giveaway? Yes. Darius let's, wasn't able to hit nope. yesterday. Uh, What'd you do? Turn and shoot. Shot. Basketball. You know what to do. All right, here we go. Get some putts. <laughs> He was using a hockey stick earlier. The balls are not set up because he was playing like a child, yep. uh, <laughs> batting them all over the place. So I don't really? think the putts is necessarily an option at this particular standpoint. But the NBA, we just talked to an NBA owner. Come on. Mm -hmm. We got to do something basketball related. Just make one. Hey, Q, right, how go. many people do you think should win? What do you think? Uh, 15? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. 15? That's good. Yep. That's number? No. I love it. Okay. 15 people, $500. All you got to do, AQ, is put the ball in the hoop right over there. All right. Holy shit. Oh! oh! What? Oh! Wow. So we nice. did the legs, too. Yeah, you did do the legs. God. That was phenomenal. Yeah, what a shot. What a way to end this Watt Trenches Wednesday. 15 people, $500. All you got to do is wow. repost this video, say something nice to somebody, and put the easiest way to pay you. Great work today. Thank you. That was nice. Great nice. job. job. D-Bot's great work this week. AJ, Sorry. great work. Boys, phenomenal job. AQ with the bank to send 15 mm. people. Mm. To the bank wow. with $500. That's beautiful. We'll be back tomorrow with another packed one. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. We're in this thing together. Let's never forget that. Goodbye.